This is Screen Junkies Movie Fight. Brought to you by Loot Crate. Now your host, Andy Signore. Greetings, Screen Junkies. Welcome to another episode of Movie Fights. I'm so excited. Today's going to be a fantastic fight. We have an amazing guest and two amazing guests you already know. Uh, today, uh, I'm so actually just have to say I'm glad to be back because Nick Mundy took over the show two weeks ago. Wow, that was intense. Good job, Nick. I stand by his ruling. I don't agree with his always his rounds, but I think Max <laughs> did, did, fight, Monday, did fight, would have earned. Fight, Monday, fight. But good job, Nick. Thanks for <laughs> holding the seat. He was holding the seat because we were in Chicago at Wizard World, which was amazing. Is that a Kevin Owens joke? <laughs> <laughs> I'm with the right crowd on this show. <laughs> I was going to wear my Bullet Club shirt, and I didn't at the last second, and now I feel... I'm sorry, I'm already interrupting you. you. Know, but it's a lot. I'm glad he went, he's here. We're gonna, I'm going to introduce him in a second, but you might already know you're getting excited, because I'm excited. But let me do some cleanup quick. Uh, Nick Money was here because we were in Chicago at Wizard World, and thank you guys so much for coming. That was amazing. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that show. Um, we have so much fun stuff today, including, in, in honor of Force Friday, what's the best movie toy ever made? Uh, we'll be pitching Ultimate Man of Steel sequels and so much more fun stuff. So at any point during the show, if you don't like something we're talking about, don't leave. Uh, just click on the bottom right-hand corner, pick your fight, and you can see all the stuff we'll be talking about in today's episode. Um, as always, we're on iTunes as well, so check us out there. But let's get to who's here, and I'm so excited. First up, you know him. He's a screenwriter of American Ultra, Chronicle, and the upcoming Victor Frankenstein, which looks awesome. You've requested him. We've been wanting him. I'm so happy he's here. It's Max Landis. Woo! It's really, it's really me. You're really here. <laughs> I can't believe it. But we've had people bothering you to be on this. I have for, for a year. I'm so grateful you, you came by. I'm glad I, we can make it happen. I was anxious about it because uh, the, the main thing people are mad at me for generally is that I express opinions. So That's the what idea we want that you to do the right place. This is, you're allowed. I, <laughs> it's a safe place. Don't, is, don't, we don't take things out of context here. This the is the end of my place. career starts now. <laughs> uh, next to him, he's a favorite of the show, the head writer of Honest Trailers and Honest Game Trailers, Spencer Gilbert. Hey, thank you. Thank you for having you me back. You Charlie Feldman? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah Charlie's yeah. great. Charlie's yes. one of my best friends. Yeah, yes. Creature Tube. And, yeah, Creature uh, yeah. Tube. And Chloe Dykstra was on this show. Chloe was here. All my ladies. All mutual friends. Yeah. I love this. Yeah, so thanks for having me back. Good job, Spencer. Next to him, we love her. She's the co-host of Profile. It's the Red Fury herself, Alicia Malone. Hello. I'm going to get slaughtered today. This is a big <laughs> fight, please. It's going to be hard. You know, really, really hard. We've had a couple, two you know, quite weird shows, uh, different shows. We wanted to bring some awesome fighters today. We've done it. I'm excited. This is going to be a great show. As always on the Dan Cam, it's Mr. Dan Merle. Hi. Yay. How's it going? How are you doing? Good. I haven't. I, I was thinking today. Am I on? <laughs> uh, I don't know if you can hear me now. Yeah. Uh, I haven't done this in a while. Yeah. It's been like a month, so it's good to be back over here. And I should I should introduce who's next to you. Next to you is uh, April O'Donnell. April fought on the Chicago show on the fan fights. And guys, cut back to me, please. Guys, you were very mean. You were too mean. You guys didn't understand. April had an unfair thing. We had four fans in Chicago come up and take on the best fighters we have. And these fans literally had no idea, no prep time. They literally just came in to do it. And I was so grateful to all the fans. But April was in town, and we wanted to bring her back. And I just wanted to apologize on behalf of the, some of the mean comments that were said. You didn't have any time to prep, correct, April? Correct. <laughs> but I thought you did a great job. Everybody did a good job. And I heard you did catch up. You, you know you're Scorsese, but you weren't as unknown in your early Scorsese. And you've since kept caught up, correct? Yes. I went and watched Goodfellas, which was incredible. I was early. definitely yeah. missing early. out. Good. So see, people, be I nice, wish. and I'm glad you caught up, and now you, you're caught up in how awesome he is, we know. So guys, be nice. April, thank you for coming. This is very fun. We're glad to have you here. And just overall, just be nice, people. Yeah. I mean, right? We ought to be nice to people. Yeah. Oh, you come try it, angry commenters. <laughs> you you come to come find us at a convention, no. and you come fight us. <laughs> Invite the angry we commenters. Got, don't do be that. mean to our fans. We love your fans. You guys rock. That's why you're oh, here. Oh, wait, wait. You guys like getting nice comments on YouTube? Who does? You should have never had me on. <laughs> <laughs> well, if they're mean to you, no, no, no. Yeah. Be nice to Max, people. We're, he's, no, we're honored he's here. All get right. get ready. You're going. It's like Jacob's <laughs> ladder level dark. Well, I'm excited. <laughs> people, <laughs> people despise me. <laughs> let's see. Let's let's don't tell them that. Let them, let them <laughs> give them a chance. I don't before, despise them. Before one more thing. Before we start, I want this shirt. This was sent to me by Romeo. Look at this. <laughs> this, this is, is tough. tough. He made me a this is tough shirt. Romeo, I don't know how to say your last name. Strat, strat, Stratodoti? Good attempt. <laughs> Stradioti. Stradioti. Romeo. Thank you, man. I've got, I'm wearing a pride. I'm so excited. That was amazing of you. Thank you for sending this to me. From Europe. That was expensive to Ooh, print this. The European nice. XL is a little tight, but I'm, I'm, I'm doing it for you, buddy. I love, thank you so much. Also, one last thing before we get to the show. Stay tuned for the very end of the show. 
We have a very special guest next week we're super excited about. So stay tuned. I'm going to reveal that. I don't want to take, take away from our amazing guest now. Ouch. Shh. Ouch. Bro. So I'm saving at the end because we're happy. But just stay tuned. At the very end, I'm going to tell you something else. Max is excited, too. I know he is. So shh. Yeah. Um, yeah, one of your buddies. Rolls reminder. As we know, I'm basing the argument on your passion, your creativity, and your points, like the facts. If you make a fact wrong, Dan's there to correct. Or if you have a question, we can ask. But he's there to always check what we're doing. All I right. Have, I have a question. Yes. On this show, because it's a debate show, should I be expressing my opinions like they're fact, or should if I <laughs> should I Some say do that? Because there's no everybody knows there's no such thing as a good movie. Uh, the, I think yeah. you want you want to tell you want to tell us why they're wrong and why yours is the best. Why I feel, a little bit why I feel opinion, they're wrong. But you're making yes. an argument. Yes, it's all about twisting and making sure okay, you have the I'm, best argument. I'm I know. Fucking, bring it. <laughs> you have a fucking different opinion than me on the internet. I'll kill your family. <laughs> wow. Okay. Oh, they God. are gonna hate him. Here no, no, go. no. <laughs> no. He's not gonna kill your family. He's just and saying I, that. No, oh, I'm not. You don't know what I'll do. And I got I got Molnar. So <laughs> calm down. <laughs> it's my bad. All right. It's Molnar's cousin. Let's do this. Now let's do this! This is where we fight! <laughs> oh, fight! 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 Now, before we fight, I have to do a quick call out to our wonderful sponsor, Loot Crate! Dan is holding some amazing items from the last month. Dan, look at this! You got a Carnage mug, a Los Polos Hermanos uh, bib? Yeah. What is that? Yeah, I'm, I'm, so I'm, I'm cooking up some great sponsor plugs <laughs> over here. <laughs> But anyway, we love Loot Crate. Dan is showing off some amazing items. As if you don't already know, they deliver pop culture items to your door for less than $20 a month. You'll get the latest apparel, collectibles, and exclusive items that Loot Crate has to offer. And Dan is showing off some of them awesome ones. I like the Hydra pin you have, too. Yeah, right? I've got a... It's a Hydra pin? Wow. If you sign up quick, next month is the Summon Crate. As they celebrate monsters, you can fit in your pocket. Items from Blizzard, Supernatural, Kid Robot, etc. Plus an exclusive collectible that Loot Crate says is the most important object pretty much in the whole universe. Is that the Infinity Gauntlet? I don't know. I don't they, know. they won't tell us. Infinity Stones. Some, maybe. Something good. Anyway, go to LootCrate.com slash MovieFights. Use the code MovieFights to save 10% on any new subscription. And don't forget, supporting Loot Crate supports this show. So thank you so much, Loot Crate. Awesome job, Dan. My Vanna White. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Round one. This is actually a Movie Fights rematch from episode 10. Can you believe it's been like, we've, this is episode 50 40 almost, 47. Yeah. Coming up on a year. So we're going back because we have so many fun fights we've done. We're bringing some back and this is a rematch. This is episode 10. Um, totally 80s for the win on Twitter asked us. What would be the ultimate movie crossover? Okay, so if you can combine two movies that wouldn't normally be able to be there, what would they be? And Spencer, we're starting with you. What's your pick? All right, I'm going to combine two things that I love. Uh, it's already happened in the comics, but I want to see it on film. That is the Marvel Universe, and I'll call it the Zombie Universe. Take your pick of zombies, you can get 28 Days Later, Zombies, Dawn of the Dead, it doesn't matter. Whatever it is, it's the catalyst to uh, one of the Marvel superheroes getting bit, and we have a super-powered zombie infection. And this is going to kick off um, what I, some of my favorite comic uh, stories, which are the weird one-off comic stories, the weird miniseries that's like... Uh, what if all the Marvel guys were around in the 1600s? Uh, what if Superman landed in uh, Soviet Russia? This is what if all the Marvel superheroes were zombies. And it's like a Sam Raimi funny horror movie. They're all devouring each other. The funniest part is that they have their superhero personalities when they're full. Uh, so, so they're in character. But then as they get hungrier and hungrier, they turn back into these killer bloodthirsty zombies. So you have Steve Rogers, you know, devouring Bucky Barnes. I'm sorry, buddy. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do it. But he can't help himself. All the zombies uh, take over the world. Some of the superheroes are, are holdouts. And I think this would really be a shot in the arm to both, uh, I'm not going to say stale genres, but both genres that could use some fun new twists. Interesting take. Alicia, what's your take? Oh, well, I really loved Mission Impossible Rogue Nation, and I can't wait for Spectre. So I would love to see Mission Impossible and James Bond do a crossover. The American spy, Ethan Hunt, and the British spy, James Bond. Ethan Hunt, of course, played by Tom Cruise. James Bond, played by Daniel Craig. I think they're both evenly matched. They both use brains and brawn. They both use technology. They're both great with the ladies. And they're both not afraid to go off book and go rogue and get the job done. So I would love these two 
to match up, to take on each other. Maybe they're both going after the same case. It could be like a Batman versus Superman kind of situation. And I just think that would so be really interesting. It, yeah, well, I'd love to see, yeah, a versus because okay. I'd, I'd love to see who would win, who would be the better spy. Got it. Max, it's your turn. <laughs> breakfast uh, time breakfast break so do i rebuff theirs now no just you first. yours first and then we'll all do a ball. okay so it can be anything i want right yes, anything okay so it's 1996 i really want a lethal weapon crossover with literally any established movie franchise those two characters inject heart humor a very specific tone into almost anything they do as shown by the varying types of villains they face within the movies so i'm going to pitch you straight up right now Lethal Weapon versus Predator. Now, you might say Danny Glover was already in Predator 2, a almost universally reviled movie, but Predator 2 actually had a lot of good ideas. The idea of a Predator in an urban environment is already compelling, certainly more compelling because it would be dealing with a wider variety of people than simply an elite commando team, which, if you watch the first Predator more than once, you know doesn't go well. However, when the Predator's out of his world and into ours, Merton Riggs, I mean, the dialogue in this movie writes itself. Act one. You know, the fucking saxophone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know, Riggs. He tore his spine out. That to me seems like some kind of serial killer. Marta, it's always a serial killer with you. Everything's a serial killer. Everything's a pattern. Oh, who's my daughter dating? What am I doing? Is he a serial killer? You investigate these things and it's nothing. I saw worse stuff than, than this in Nam. It's not going to be a big deal. We'll have it done by the end of the week. Second act. <laughs> Just flying around from those fucking lasers the spear. Riggs, you have to listen to me. What we're seeing here is a plasma weapon. It's either experimental or possibly maybe extraterrestrial. I've heard about these things, Riggs. You hear about them out in New Mexico. Roger, come on, come on. I confess, it's strange. I confess, there's something weird going on. But extraterrestrial? The only thing out of the only thing out of this world around here is your daughter's body. Am I right, Riggs? What? Am I right, Roger? What? What did you say, Riggs? You, you didn't. You said you're still mad about that. That was in Lethal Weapon Three. Come on, leave it alone. Okay, so, um, so. Then Act 3... Oh, that's where 22 Jump Street stole it from. <laughs> it's uh, it's, it's a Act 3. Yeah. I'm replacing Lethal Weapon 4 with this movie. Got it. Directly. So I thought it was 96. Uh, what? Wasn't it 1996? 1996, so we're right okay, after we're Lethal Weapon 3. Okay, got it. So no Jet Li or Chris Rock. No, I'm replacing the Jet Li fight at the end of Lethal Weapon 4 with them physically fighting a predator. <laughs> <laughs> because, because what's the best part of Lethal Weapon 4, which is not a shitty movie, it's just not as good as the rest... The fight at the end with Jet Li, which is about brotherhood, is about friendship, yep. has an incredible emotional payoff of, of, of uh, Roger swimming down and refusing to give up on him. You know, the emotional core of the Lethal Weapon movies is pure and strong and well executed and well acted and smart. And Predator is just a cool idea. He's just a cool idea. You add any cool idea to a Lethal Weapon movie or add the Lethal Weapon characters in tone to any cool idea, you get something worth seeing. You think Lethal Weapon versus Terminator wouldn't be a great movie? You think uh. Lethal Weapon You think Lethal Weapon with E.T. wouldn't be a great movie? <laughs> I can go further. You think Lethal Weapon in Inception wouldn't be way better? You think Lethal Weapon in... Well, let's ask these guys. What do you think? <laughs> okay, sorry. I, 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 well, is is there now rebuttal? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're all, now it's open forum. Open um, forum. Yeah, uh, so Lethal Weapon 4. What, is Joe Pesci in, uh, along for the ride? Is, uh, predator. Uh, what do you mean a predator? No, it's... Uh, it's Guys, you gotta listen to me. I've known about this stuff for years. I've done a lot of research on... Have you heard of the internet? I got AOL. I have done a lot of research. They've been coming for years. AOL, he, that's true. AOL, AOL, he, he would joke that he, yeah, um, he would be like a conspiracy theorist, except for then, in the middle of the second act, he would go, it's not just killing people. It's a hunter. You gotta listen to me. It's a hunter. He okay. would get it. So that character's uh, smart and brave. Let's start with Alicia. <laughs> um, Alicia... I think you even said it in your own pitch. Is like they're both this, they're both that. They're too similar. You're That's pairing up. That's what makes a great matchup. Does it though? Like, yeah, because unlike you know, Lethal Weapon and Predator, where the end fight I feel like would be over like that because of Predator and his ability. I feel like Bond and Hunt, at least they're neck and neck. It's like watching like smooth peanut butter fight chunky peanut butter. It's like the same versus the same, well, minus like the butter. accent. They're both smooth, they're both uh, good fighters, they both have like the Sky Mall catalog full of gadgets. Yep. It's like, it's, it's you know, 1A and 1B, and it's just not that interesting to me. Lethal Weapon is insane, I, I mean, uh, versus Predator is insane. I'm kind of, I'm, you kind of sold me on it, um, but the, the Jet Li fight was good. That was like grumpy old men versus uh, <laughs> like just getting their ass kicked over and over again. That's and then you're going to replace Jet Li with a predator? 
That is, that is not a fight scene. That's like a, that's a smash cut to both of their heads cut off. The predator hunts the most dangerous prey in the world, not like two, uh, one suicidal guy that's probably going to bro- blow his brains out anyways, w- whether the predator's there or not, and one like out of shape kind of family man who doesn't really, who, yeah. and uh, yeah. So you're saying an out of shape, like divorced guy wouldn't be a match for like a team of terrorists or... Or like maybe like a bunch maybe. of paleontologists who were there to vet an island would probably get killed immediately by dinosaurs. Maybe or some kid <laughs> taking a time machine back to the fifties. He's never gonna figure out how to get home. <laughs> <laughs> That's what movies are. They're underdog stories. That's too much of an underdog. Like you still have to buy into like Danny Glover could uh, uh, old Danny Glover. He the weapon did. for Danny Glover. It would be the weapon for Danny Glover. Not okay. not Predator Two Danny okay, Glover. Okay. Maybe <laughs> the lethal weapon for he's like on it. He has pills. He's like. That's time. what's scary. <laughs> That's what's scary? That's what adds stakes. <laughs> the problem with Lethal Weapon 4 is that ultimately that movie wasn't focused on them. No, it was Every Chris movie, Rock, and yeah, they're trying to Chris build Rock in too and many more things. So why don't you like yeah. Marvel Zombies or this one? Let's hear that. Well, I time. like them both, and I would pay to see a Mission Impossible James Bond movie. Not as quick as I'd pay in, in to see a perfect Lethal Weapon versus Predator or Lethal Weapon versus anything. But as he said, chunky peanut butter, smooth peanut butter, <laughs> I disagree. So I'm going to tell you guys why I think your movies not are bad ideas. Yours won't work. Yours flat won't work. The current tone of the Marvel movies is not built to do Roger Kirkman's, uh, Robert Kirkman's, Roger, that's my friend. Oh, God. I hope he's not watching. But <laughs> Robert Kirkman's Marvel Zombies succeeded because of an ultimate Marvel storyline involving All the Fantastic Four yeah. and its cynicality and anger towards its content. You think... Which we're going to need to get to sooner or later. This is the Marvel alternate cinematic universe that we're like where, where you, we do where? all these spin-off things. This is like phase five or six when we're all sick of uh, all So this the is in continuity. like when there aren't movies anymore. Yeah, right. Like 20, no, 20, no, 20 we're going to be in them sooner than so you like think. The we'll Marvel be in phase alternate five universe. Like, well, a more, a, an alternate Marvel cinematic universe... Sounds Featuring awesome. all of the A-list actors, it's tonally inconsistent. The reason the comics work is because the Marvel comics aren't tonally consistent with each other. X-Men is often much darker than anything that happens in Spider-Man. Spider-Man is usually darker than anything that happens in, like, Miss Marvel. These comics work because they cater to different audiences. The Marvel Universe movies... I just got mad. The Marvel... <laughs> I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. The Marvel Universe movies, the... If you asked me, and no one has, but if you asked me the big problem with the movies is they are too totally consistent. Avengers 2 was just like Avengers 1 again, and then someone got killed and there was blood. The only one of them that had even a vaguely different tone is the original Iron Man, and it's what allowed them to kick it off. The movies have different subject matter, but they're all PG-13. Plus, I feel like Avengers well, have gone up against aliens. I mean, they've got gods in their well, no, no, team. No. I can't imagine. He's referencing a specific... I know, but me coming just from the movie side of things, like I can't imagine zombies within the world of the current movie. Well, the problem so with you're the trailers, that it would seem like a parody, because the comic... Is a, parody. is a parody, yeah. Marvel, Marvel Zombies is a silly, super dark, incredibly violent, really unpleasant to read, <laughs> not for everyone. <laughs> yeah, not for everyone. Movie. And I just wrote American Ultra, which came out as a super violent, not for everyone movie. But I would never pin the Marvel characters in that and be like, boom. Well, your complaint is that they're all getting too samey and consistent from each other and then saying that this is, the problem with this is that it's too different? I mean, this is a breath of fresh air. You know, oh, yeah, a breath of fresh air would also be starting a Marvel movie with Captain with like Chris Evans jerking off and being like, I hate myself, I miss the 40s. <laughs> I don't but, like, like that. Yeah, exactly. Todd Solis, Todd Solis. <laughs> yeah, it's the yeah, same, I'll, imagine, I'll imagine <laughs> it's, it's, it's a cool idea. I like Marvel Zombies. But at the end of the day, it doesn't match with what we have. And I thought our job was to match the things we have. Mm -hmm. Good. That's a good point. And I want to get Alicia in this too. So thoughts on on either of their pitches, why they don't work? Yeah, well, I I just, I love the Lethal Weapon movies. I just would love to see them do another one and not do uh, something weird with Predator in there. Just because I can't imagine the end. It's a cool idea. I like their, you know, wisecracking about the whole situation, but it's just when it comes down to the final fight, I just feel like it'd be over like that. You, but humans have repeatedly defeated Predator. Whereas I Arnold like... defeated Predator nude. Yeah. He defeated Predator. Yeah, Arnold can. Nude. <laughs> Come on. And not physically. He just trapped it. He didn't Danny physically Glover. best the Predator. That's never, you're never gonna. I'm sorry. Yeah. Cheapens the Predator when you put it that way. But, it's uh, true. But yeah, and I, I disagree that um, two characters who are evenly matched is not exciting to watch on screen because I feel like that is, that, that's what creates the tension. It's like, who's going to win? Who will beat out each other? And to see them go head to head 
I love these spy movies and to see those two characters like that gets me really excited. I'm not interested in seeing white men in their late 40s fight to save the world anymore right now. Yeah. And I'm not even saying like white men like, oh, cis, white privilege. Like, honestly, I don't want to see Tom Cruise. I like the idea of Mission Impossible versus James Bond, but in its current I hated Rogue Nation. Really? I, uh, loved I didn't. It, it really bought. It made me tired and sleepy. Uh, I thought it was uh, exciting. It's it. Well, like, well, what's her, what was her name? Uh, she was great. Rebecca Ferguson. Uh, you didn't like Rebecca Ferguson. She's fine. It just when you when you're coming off of Mission Impossible Four, which is an awesome cartoon that's funny and self-aware. This was not that. This he gets into a motorcycle accident. <laughs> I'm never this guy. So wait, no, let's. But I, I, we could go. I want to get distracted. I got to keep us on point. Mission Impossible movies aside, why? Why? And for both of you, why is this not right? Because okay, I don't hear a lot of. I've heard chunky peanut butter versus uh, take, take regular, but like because it's too samey. That's where you guys are standing. It's it so like gather everybody's it, just, it just feels like you know the parents like having the kids hang out because they're the same age. Like you like spy stuff, right? You like spy stuff. Oh, let's, let's just put them together and make them do spy things. Like, awesome. You're, you're, they're evenly matched, true. But you want people to be e- evenly matched, like brains versus brawn, or like fire powers versus ice powers. Like yeah. at the most basic level, this is a spy. This is spy versus spy. A spy versus spy movie would be awesome. Well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> they tried. I read a script that was terrible. But listen, <laughs> listen, you're right. But now, in every movie, Ethan Hunt ends up having to go on the run. What disavowed. If, he's been disavowed. He's been disavowed. What if the person who was sent to track him down was, was James, James Bond? Bond? Wait, what or, am I doing? Yes. Or Jason no. Bourne. Or no, just, like Jason if you Bourne is not a government operative. No, yeah, but that's like what? a fun matchup because it's like the cold hearted killer versus what if the suave the guy. Impossible the mission t- team had to hunt He's down. He's helping Jason you, Bourne. Alicia. Yes. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm pitching. Listen to Max. I shit. No, okay, so my debate for yours. I, I'm calling it. I thank you. For you just help. did it. You just you just helped your cause. Alicia gets the point. Uh, what? I'm trying to wrangle this up, but you sold me. Because I thought they both so you the problem what happened is they both took you out because you're, he's right. Yours is crazy, but they're also right. Yours is crazy because they're too old. If you had gone younger, if it is younger. It's after no, you picked three. They're forty-four. You picked four. You picked I said age of four. Yeah, that. if you had stuck if in nineteen ninety-six. If you had done younger, maybe. But they, their argument of them being old was old because I do kind of want to see it. But that, I, I have to base on the arguments. I demand a recount. You, <laughs> I demand a recount. I'm giving kicking it to Alicia. I'm You're giving Alicia the, the point because that was an interesting take. All right. That's Moving on. Why? Because I pitched a better movie than she. Mom, this pick. is the story of my life. The best pick. <laughs> she you, jumped Max. on it. Dan, I'm sorry. Any cleanup there? Uh, well, I mean, <laughs> so much. Uh, this seems ticky tacky at this point. It is. It would be feasible to have Joe Pesci on America Online in 1996. <laughs> <laughs> it was available in homes, so that's not a. Uh, I got mail, I got mail. And yeah, I was just, if the movie was in 1996, Predator 2 was in 1990, so Danny Glover wasn't that much older in 96 than he was in 1990. So, yeah. Good. Little things. That was, that was tough. I, so, this, I love this. This is great. Uh, let's go to round two. We missed talking about this last week because uh, we aired our Chicago Comic Con episode, uh, but too important to not talk about, especially since our guest, Max. Uh, is writing a new Superman comic called Superman American Alien. Comes out November, correct? Yes, please, please, please go buy it. It's, yes. It's, very, it's been a lifelong dream of mine to write a, uh, a, super, a Superman comic, and it just means <laughs> the, absolute, yes. the absolute world to me. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's the fulfillment of a lifelong dream. The first issue is sort of a pretty basic Smallville issue, but then we get less and less basic. And, you know, I'm not doing anything crazy with the character, but I'm also... Not doing anything crazy with the character, <laughs> so uh, I think I think if you like Superman or if you, you don't even like Superman but want to like him, it's going to be a good comic to read. I'm excited. This is going to be fun. So in honor, I know and I know you're a Superman fan, so this made sense because the rumors were George Miller was going to direct Man of Steel two, and now the rumor came out he's not going to do it. They're not going to make Man of Steel two. Whatever they're doing, here's our chance. Let's pitch the Ultimate Man of Steel two movie. Um, and so this time we're starting with you, Alicia, and then okay. back to Max, and then Spencer. But Alicia, pitch us your Ultimate Man of Steel 2 movie, which would likely come out after Batman v Superman-ish. Yeah. So wait, so does our pitch have to incorporate the things that happened in Batman vs. Superman? Since it's Man of Steel 2 and that one's coming up, I would think it would be why. I guess we could ignore it. But I haven't, it. I haven't seen it. it. Yeah, so right. we, should, we should be forced. Well, they, the rule should be we have I'm to pitch a direct they know sequel. Batman exists in your world. You okay. Can, you but, can take whatever you want. But, but it has to be a direct sequel to the first Man of Steel. Correct. And we now know that Batman's in there. We don't know how he's going to interact. A film I hate. 
Man of Steel, yes. I, we, okay, we I'm very to, excited. You know, hey, I have to but think just, of something. Batman ha- can be in the world because we know Batman's going to go against Superman. Whether you use it or not, that's what we're just make sure we're... The Justice League is clearly going to form at some point in this universe. Okay. Alicia, go ahead. Well, and I think like uh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe does, the sequel will kind of be of its own thing and, and you know, separate from Batman vs. Superman. Starting well, Alicia. So, Man of Steel 2 for the man who has everything, based on the 1985 comic of the same name. Uh, I found this comic storyline really interesting. What happens is uh, Superman, he's on planet Krypton and he goes under the trance of an alien plant called Black Mercy, which shows the victim what his true heart desires. And what his true heart desires is not to save planet Earth, is not to be with Lois Lane, but to be on Krypton as Kal-El with a family. So he has all these illusions and then he sees uh, his son and then he eventually realizes it's illusion. He has to tell his son that it's not real. It's a great episode so of uh, like Justice League too. Dark. Our, our animated series, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's it's, it's a dark look and I, I like uh, darker character moments with these superhero films. Uh, and to direct it, I was thinking a director who I'd love to see do more is uh, Bong Joon-ho from uh, Snowpiercer. The he also host. did Yeah, the host as well. Nice and Mother. Pick. And so he has a great dark sensibility when it comes to horror, but also as he showed... With Snowpiercer, he does incredible action sequences. I would love to see him get a chance to tackle something like this. And I think it could be something different from the first Man of Steel, which I also didn't like. Awesome, Max. I'm excited. Let's hear it. Can I think of it for five seconds? Sure. I, go to sp- I told you I wasn't oh, going to prepare. Sorry. I do it off the top <laughs> well, we'll of my head. To, we'll go to Spencer first. I know okay. you also need to pitch as a director. Uh, but we'll go to Spencer first. All right, cool. Uh, Man of Steel 2, for me, is going to be like a real back-to-basics just Superman versus Lex Luthor story. And I feel like we didn't get that in Man of Steel 1. We're not going to get it in Batman versus Superman because there's too many other things happening. So this is inspired by Grant Morrison's All-Star Superman. Um, the uh, In brief, the plot is Lex Luthor tricks Superman into the sun or something like that, uh, and he has a year to live. And uh, in a nice twist, um, Lex Luthor is found out of the plot, and he's sentenced to death. So it's both of these titanic figures facing their own mortality, in like, <clears throat> and you see how they respond differently to that. Superman responds by wanting to leave a legacy and you know, kind of doing this bucket list and saving people and trying to solve the sick children and world hunger and trying to do all these good things that we didn't get to see Superman do in Man of Steel. And Lex Luthor uses his impending doom to plan like one last big world conquering hurrah. And, uh, you know, it's just these two. This is not like a Justice League movie. Did they mo- die at the end? Spoiler alert. Uh, do, do you want me to spoil uh, uh, the comic? Because it's an amazing comic that everyone should read. Um, Best Superman uh, comic ever read. Cool. Uh, yeah, right? Um, and then the, uh, so Superman dies, but Lex Luthor learns some things or, or two in the process and basically reincarnates him through DNA. Lex Luthor learns that he needs Superman to be who he is. It's kind of a Batman Joker uh. thing going on at the end. Um, but you get the good... Americana, like uh, this god, and confronting his own mortality, and being such a such like a, a humble and giving character that he wasn't in Man of Steel, um, in uh, in this comic. And there's no there's no Justice League, there's no Juggalo Squad, there's no uh, whatever. It's just uh, it's a Superman and Lex Luthor, you know, brains and evilness versus brawn and integrity, and that's what I want out of a Superman movie. And I know he doesn't want to do this, but I'm going to drag him kicking and screaming, is Steven Spielberg, because he loves Americana and wonder and hope, and he can direct big action. Okay, I got it. Great. <laughs> and now it's your turn, Max. No pressure. Those are two good ones. In the wake of destruction of over half of Metropolis at the end of Man of Steel, Superman is a universally reviled figure. Clark Kent, a small-town boy who had never even been in a fist fight before he was attacked by a military man and forced to decimate a city he loved, has terrible PTSD and has given up being Superman. He gets the shakes every night. He's trying to date Lois Lane, but the fact that he has a secret that she is doing a huge piece on that she is being like very reviled about the idea that Superman was ultimately a negative thing and that the destruction, you know, it's 9-11. It's, it's 10 9-11s. The, the destruction of Man of Steel, the, the fact that in the trailers for Batman, no, no, Batman versus, Batman versus Superman it's doesn't exist. Batman versus Superman doesn't exist. Okay, so <laughs> this is a direct sequel to Man of Steel. Clark moves home. He is miserable. 
but he has to do one more assignment before he leaves his job at the Daily Planet. And we get to really see this guy. I mean, he's living in New York post 9-11, basically. Everyone on the street has graffiti saying, like, Superman's fucking incredible. Superman fucking sucks. You know, like, everyone also doesn't understand, because it's the age of the internet, that Superman and Zod are even necessarily two different people. Like, they sort of think they both came to Earth at the same time and did the same thing. Keep in mind, the first time the world saw that Superman suit was fucking him destroying the city. So for all they know, they were just two random aliens, and that haunts Clark every night because he thinks of himself as a man and as an American and as a good guy, and that tortures him. He has to do one more thing. He has to go interview this billionaire investor named Lex Luthor. He goes to interview him. He doesn't understand why he's been chosen. He's a rookie interviewer. And Lex sits him down and goes, you and me have the same problem, but we have an image problem. He's like, what? Now everybody knows Lex Luthor is a sharky investor. He treats his employees like shit. He's basically an evil Elon Musk. But when you're sitting there with him and he's Tom Hanks, he seems kind of great. He's like to Henry Cavill, like, you know, you and I have an image problem. He's like, I'm just a reporter. He goes, no, you're not. You're Superman. You think it was hard for me to figure out who you were? But there's an opportunity here for both of us to work together. I think I can repair your image. We're going to start branding you. But I need you to do favors for me. I need you to repair facilities around the world. I think I can make you look like the greatest humanitarian figure of all time. Now, is that what you want to do? Do you want to help people and inspire people with hope? He's like, yes. So it starts. And suddenly, we're getting into all the stuff that we didn't get to see in Man of Steel. Him saving people. Him being sent places. Lex Luthor is sponsoring Superman. It's incredible. He Suddenly, he has a 60 Minutes interview. Everyone starts to love Superman like they do in the comics and understand that what happened in Metropolis was a mistake. That's when someone breaks into Clark's home. It's a guy in a bat costume. You need to listen to me. You can't trust Luther. Or it, it's, it's the Warner Brothers movie, so you need to listen to me. You can't trust Luther. <laughs> uh, what are you talking about? You've broken into my home. You're, you're the Batman. You're the vigilante from Gotham. That's right. Listen. It's part of a bigger plan. He has bad, bad intentions. But if you listen to me, I can help you out of this. If you work for me instead of Luther, as an agent of Batman, we can pull together the Earth's greatest heroes. What are you talking about the Earth's greatest heroes? You're talking about all the other freaks that are showing up? You're an alien. Your birth certificate is forged. I know everything about you. You need to start listening to me now. Boop! Luther security teams, there's someone in here! Fucking knocks down Batman, rips his mask off. It's Bruce Wayne, basically. It's Bill Gates. He escapes. Luther's guys arrive. Who was here? It was the Bat Vigilante. Did you see his face? Could you figure out who he was? No. We then enter the bulk of the movie, which is Luther forcing Superman to track down and capture the members of the Justice League, all the other metahumans. And they seem scary. The Flash's powers are out of control. Wonder Woman kills lots of people. Green Arrow is another friggin' vigilante. The Martian Manhunter's a monster. And by the time you get to the third act, he has captured all of them. And that's when Luther reveals, what you've created is a sovereign force more powerful than any that has ever existed on Earth. This team could take down any army. No nation in the world could stand against us. You have given me a Blackwater that I can take over the world with. How does that feel, you fucking idiot? And Superman is like, I thought we were doing this to protect the world. I'm naive and sweet. He's like, your next job is to take out Batman. And he's like, oh, okay. So he goes to take, off Bat take out Batman because Luther is still sort of on his side, even though he's getting scarier and scarier. He still saved Clark. Lex Luthor has saved Superman from being a pariah. And as things grow in emotional intensity, keep in mind I'm making this up as I go along, <laughs> as things grow in emotional intensity, by the end of the last act, Superman with Batman goes rogue. Because Bruce Wayne basically says, you didn't give away my identity. I know you know there's something wrong with Luther. If you want to inspire people, do what I do. Inspire by fear. Scare Luther. Because that's what he's making you do. And Superman realizes, I don't need to beat Lex Luthor. I can't condemn him. I can't testify in a stand. I can't say who I am. What I need to do is free the Justice League. So the last act of the movie is Batman, Superman team up. I don't fucking work for you. We're going to work together. I don't I'm not an agent of Batman. They free the Justice League, have to fight Luther, and in one of the coolest sequences in movie history, beautifully, beautifully directed by James Cameron. <laughs> 
I'm pulling him off Avatar. <laughs> uh, Thank you. The Justice League. The Justice League gets into a major fight in a city center with Luther's uh, Luther droids, like the robots. Except the whole time, Superman Clark is like. They're hitting back. Go save those people. We got to save these people. So one member of the Justice League is fighting the Luther droids at a time. There is almost no property damage and no one is hurt. <laughs> and at the end of it, Superman lands and rips open the Luther droid. And Luther's like, you can't, you can't kill me on TV. You know what? What are you doing? You destroyed half a sit. And then it's a slow pan up. And the city's fine. <laughs> and the Justice League is like walking up behind him. And Luther's like, oh, shit. And Superman just goes, bink. Knocks him out. Justice League now exists. Man of Steel 3, I would want to focus on Doomsday. Justice League versus Doomsday. Wow. All right, you were on a roll. So right. I let him go. I was, <laughs> oh, I'm I, sorry. I, 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 for the sake of everyone who was watching, I'm sure I'm they sure wanted to hear where it something went. Better. No, man. Uh, uh, pretty intense. Yeah. Guys, what do you think? I want to say that more than Batman versus Superman. <laughs> <laughs> I think that sounds awesome. The team up. Um, yeah, so it's hard, it's hard for me to poke holes. I think both of the movies sound really great. The only thing I would say is I don't really want to see Steven Spielberg do a Superman movie. I'd love to see him just continue to war films with Tom Hanks forever. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I like. Sure, sure. Spencer. Uh, well, I think w with Alicia's, um, you gave me more of my least favorite part of Man of Steel, which was Krypton. There's a lot of the Krypton, the the like weird like pin art robots, and then like the, just the sepia tone. Can we make tone, it better everything. than the first one? I guess yeah, maybe that's true. You could you could give that another pass. And yeah. uh, Max, that was amazing. Um, it, it started off really dark though with P with I don't want to see Superman with PTSD. Um, like I don't want to see mopey Superman. Nope, there he goes. There he goes. <laughs> <laughs> no, Clark. <laughs> and He's I, sad. And just for, even though that sounds awesome, like I don't want to see him being manipulated into doing good. I want him to do good out of his own volition and just be be Superman himself just once without uh, Luther manipulating him and. I think we still haven't seen that. No, we haven't. And we still haven't seen um, just a Superman movie. Uh, I mean, we got one, but we still haven't seen we the Superman movie. We got really good ones. Yeah, we still haven't seen the one we want out of uh, Henry Cavill in this new era. Of... <laughs> it's distracting. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was having fun. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, that that um, again, yours your sounds awesome, but it, it throws in the Justice League and it throws in Batman in really smart ways. I just want a Superman Lex Luthor movie. I just want that. So would yours have uh, the aftermath of Man of Steel? Because I feel like that needs to be it addressed. It needs to be addressed. Because it was ridiculous. And that's the only thing I like about, well, one of the things I like about Batman vs. Superman is that they look like that they yeah, address Yeah, but I, I yeah. think that's a mistake in Batman. I don't think at any point Zack Snyder was like, this is horrible. I think he was like, look at how cool Superman. Do you want to know how I know that? Yeah. Because at the end, they're standing in rubble and they make out. Yep. And it's like... <laughs> but I think now he's trying to yeah, fix... Yeah, no, now he's doing it. Well, that's what I was doing. What, to answer your question, to, to answer your query about mine, uh, or the, the darkness, uh, that darkness is important because I never have written... I'm writing a Superman comic for DC right now. I would never write this guy. This is a boring character. It's a guy in a suit who can fly. The most interesting thing about Superman is that he's a guy with a job who is nice and kind and what, what I hated in Man of Steel is they killed his dad. The whole point of Superman is that he wants to do nice things because he's, he was raised good and he's a nice guy. That's what makes him cooler than Batman. But to answer, to answer your query, you talk about him being manipulated into doing good. I think that's where you have to start as a sequel to Man of Steel. I think you have to start with a guy who saw a city destroyed and went, I don't want to do this anymore. Mm. I can't do this right now. And then finds his way to happiness. Yeah, and I and I like the idea of mine because I like the idea of him being conflicted between what he really wants, which is just to be a guy, normal guy with a family, versus like having to save the world and being with Lois Lane. Well, I, okay, go ahead. Are, are yeah, you, that, you're dinging it. Oh. I'm dinging it. I'm dinging it. I'm dinging it because I just think uh, you both sort of. The, the, that was the best argument of Man of Steel. Because <laughs> the, the, the question was Man of Steel, and I feel like yours are interesting standalone stories. Yeah. But I think he made the argument, that, and he said it, and it's that was the best version that he pitched, coming off of where they were, whereas yours two is in these other nether zones, but which could be interesting. I'm giving the point to Max. Ah. Th thank you. I do want to say, Spencer, I want to see your movie because I also want a Superman Lex Luthor movie. Yeah. And also, is that so much to ask? 
Dan, any things you'd like to add on that round? You know, um, I already called it. No, I mean, you know, that was I was listening to the pitch. It's the a only, pretty good pitch. Yeah, the only thing that I found that was interesting was just that Alicia's story, which I didn't know for the matter of everything, was done by Alan Moore and Dave Gibbons, who did Watchmen, which is kind of an interesting little side note. But no, yeah. I agree. I want to see yours. I want to see both of them actually. But I think based, I give, I guess, gave him extra points because he did it on the fly, and there yeah. were some things you probably could have, he could have fine tuned. I'm sure. You all could I'm thinking about but, is is the, all the things I would change. But still. Massive props are doing on the fly, so I give you extra points, and I wanted to – let's get us to round three. Round three. There's been a lot of uh, castings for biopics recently. Um, some – Kate Blanchett was just cast as Lucille Ball. Mike Epps is going to be Richard Pryor. Josh Gad is going to be Roger Ebert. Um, so lots of fun castings happening. And so Jordan Campbell, Soupy Doopy on Twitter, asked us, <laughs> cast the ultimate biopic movie. We're looking for an actor and what real-life person they would play. And Max, we're going to come to you first this time. What was my answer? Who was – you had said – Donald Trump. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Donald. but who did I have playing him? Will Ferrell. Will Ferrell. Oh, yeah. Will Ferrell is Donald Trump. Uh, I really like – I'm in the – I really like the George Bush uh, biopic uh, with Brolin. It was Brolin, right? Yeah. yeah. And and I really feel like Donald Trump is a massively corrupt, unbelievably terrible, really shockingly bad person. And the more you research him, the more things you find out that are just like – what? The more insane stories you hear. The guy announced that he would fuck his own daughter if she wasn't his daughter. That's a real quote. Uh, it's not direct, but he <laughs> says, if she wasn't my daughter, I'd probably be dating her. Ugh. That's a real quote. Uh, he's a monster. He's an animal. He was born into wealth and never went down. He's done nothing but lose money while accruing idiots. He lies to everyone. He says whatever's on his mind. It's an incredible I just biopic. hope we can get him to tweet you a reply after this. Hey, Donald. <laughs> hey, Donald. You're a piece of shit. You're never going to be president. And if you are, it's the end of our country. No, I, I really, I think, I, I, I think, I think, you know, I, I, his lack of restraint, his misunderstanding, his level of privilege could be in a biopic with the right director and the right actor. So why Will Ferrell? Because I think he'd be funny. But I bet there's so someone... So it's a comedy. <laughs> uh, it's not a comedy. His life is a fucking tragedy. So that's what I'm trying to figure out. Will Ferrell's playing the legit straight Tragedy and comedy are so interconnected. I mean, was Social Network a comedy? No, but it sure was funny. You know, it, it's, it's, it, it's one of those things where that story of this animal who basically does whatever he wants and never compromises his whole life and is rewarded and rewarded and rewarded by a sick society that favors capitalism over compassion and favors volume over content. This is a terrible person who is one, is massively rich and is now a legit candidate for president. There is so much to unpack here that that movie <laughs> Is well, incredible. I, I like the passion, but what you're focusing on what era? Up to now? The, the whole present? way. Okay, we're doing the whole thing. All right. From Save. corrupt cokehead to corrupt cokehead billionaire <laughs> to corrupt Jeez. cokehead hotel and casino proprietor to corrupt cokehead presidential candidate. The whole way, he's an animal, and it would be fucking great. And maybe not Will Ferrell, maybe Fastbender, but everyone casts Fastbender as everything and everything. It but it's a meaty role for Farrell. We'll keep it there. It's I a like, meaty role for anyone. We'll come back. Spencer, it's what's your It's a great pick? role. Pure class for Will Farrell. Yeah. Great. Very good. Very good. Um, I am uh, going with Nick Offerman as Teddy Roosevelt. Um, not just because they look the same. These are two guys who have both written books on the virtues of masculinity and what it is to be a man. And they both look identical. I mean, he's clearly oh, aping his style already. It's on the screen. We can see um, it. And Teddy Roosevelt has this awesome duality to him where he's basically fat Batman. Um, he, was, <laughs> he was born like this sickly, weak child to rich parents, and he basically trained himself into a badass. He apprenticed himself out in a dude ranch. He, uh, he sent himself to war when he really didn't need to go. He's leading all these suicidal charges, and he's a really compelling character. Um, but there's kind of a darkness because you're worried, like, uh-oh, I don't really want to see this guy being president because he's kind of a warmonger and kind of like a gung-ho, shoot him up kind of character. But uh, in like a nice twist, he does mellow out when he becomes president and he becomes a gigantic conservationist and he wins the Nobel Peace Prize. And he's just got this amazing character arc from, uh, from cowboy, well, from rich uh, uh, brat who has asthma and can't go outside to like gung-ho cowboy to war hero uh, to warmonger to uh, one of the best five presidents we've ever had. 
Um, and Nick Offerman looks just like him. He does look like <laughs> him. Alicia, what's your pick? I'm going with Cary Grant, played by George Clooney. There's something really fascinating to me about classic movie stars because we didn't know as much about them as we do with stars today with social media and tabloids, entertainment shows, paparazzi, etc., etc. And Cary Grant is always so interesting. He's had a fascinating life. Uh, he was born as... Alec Archibald Leach in England. He moved to Hollywood, he changed his name. Then of course he was involved with so many great classic movies. So in a biopic you could get the filming of like North by Northwest and His Girl Friday and Affair to Remember, all his great movies. Um, George Clooney uh, modeled himself after Cary Grant, the very suave, debonair, classy, gentleman, romantic icon. But uh, Cary Grant also, of course, had a lot of rumors about bisexuality. They were rumors. He, had he, was, a, he was bi. He had a relationship with Randolph Scott and was living with him. And there was that great photo shoot they both did together mm -hmm. that was really sweet. So there's just such an interesting layer. Plus, he did a lot of LSD. Yeah. A lot of LSD under doctor supervision because he suffered from depression. And they used that to help him with his depression. So much interesting stuff that could be delved into here. And for me, just that whole era in Hollywood is so fascinating so i'd love to see it great free for all what do you guys think of each other's picks i think i want to see all three of these movies but i think mine's the most entertaining <laughs> and, the most, and the most relevant well i say this with great sincere fear but his story's not over yet he's still going <laughs> i, I kind of want to wait until we know how this all shakes out because this could be the difference between comedy and tragedy is seeing what how what the next four years of his life also, I feel us. like it's so despicable that it's almost hard to watch now. It's so close to it, it happening like, right now. It's the second. definition of too soon. And then I think that um, uh, he should play himself. He <laughs> is like an actor. He's a fake. Oh He's, I don't, the reason I'm not so disgusted by him is because I don't believe the things that he's saying. I don't think he believes them either. I'm like, you're a fraud. You're, you're like a goofball. No, you're thinking of Glenn Beck. Donald Trump, <laughs> Donald Trump is completely transparent to the degree that he can't control anything he does. Saying that, that she was questioning him because she was bleeding out of somewhere. Okay. Uh, he, no, 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 this is not a man who is fake. <laughs> Donald Trump has been congratulated and rewarded for expressing himself. <laughs> and and being honest yeah, to himself. Scary. But do you think his point is, is it a little early? Do you want to see where it goes? No, of course not. The movie <laughs> the movie ends. You can always do a sequel. The movie ends with I am announcing my candidacy for president of the United States and you going, "Oh!" Ah! like that and then the movie <laughs> ending. You know, he's an animal. It's it's more interesting Teddy Roosevelt's inspiring figure. Cary Grant is possibly my favorite celebrity of all time and and the LSD component of that is incredible. Yeah. I want to see fucking the Donald Trump movie. <laughs> Even if it's not with Will Ferrell, I want to go see it. He's too interesting. He's too interesting. Okay. Uh, thoughts? Oh, yeah. I was just and again, we're, the question. Shoot down each Pass. other's too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pass the ultimate. Yeah, what, what's wrong with these, these picks, Alicia? Um, Teddy Roosevelt, that's, yeah, it sounds interesting uh, i just i guess for me he's not that much of a fascinating figure because you don't know enough about yeah him. Bing. yeah i don't know much about him at That's all so i'm not for. compelled to see it but george clooney's too old mind well yeah I, I would have a young actor play the younger version of cary grant but the the older huh. version Oh, like okay. Maybe, yeah, maybe. They look a lot alike, and you can go and Google people and like, mash their faces together. Dan, has, has George Clooney ever done a, a British accent? <laughs> has he ever? That's a good question. Not well, a well, movie. well, I can't think of one. Cary Grant is like a little, but at the beginning, yeah, but I guess you, very... you back out of it because he's not playing Cary Grant. He has at a the tran, what's called a yeah. transatlantic accent. Yeah, he has, it's a very particular oh, style. Yeah. That's weird coming out of George Clooney's mouth to me. That's just that it's, something it's doesn't good. fit. It, it creates yeah, I agree with different. what Spencer is saying, which is that her <laughs> idea is bad. Maybe <laughs> I think your idea is bad. Yes. Also. What about what you feeling on Trump? If you're just to get your thoughts on both. Oh, I just you know I think I. I don't have much because, it, it, yeah, it seems entertaining. I can't get a sense of the tone. It could be played as a farce or it could be Cohen played as a, as a terrible. Okay. Um, uh, I don't know if Will Ferrell has the chops. I, I liked him. I don't like, in, I wish I hadn't chosen In him. that like weird voiceover movie, it was fine, but he. Uh, I, I think he's going to be too funny. You're going to be wanting to Can laugh. I change my, Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> <No>. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> because we had the campaign. Red, no, blue. Well. Yeah. Remember yeah. the campaign with Will Ferrell, which was which was a comedy. I'm going to call, yeah. I think I think you're, they're right. The casting was, was wrong. And, yeah. And so I'm, I'm just going to, now if you're, you might be out this round, out of these two, which one do you like? Just because I'm trying to get everyone's final thoughts here. We have to include the casting. 
If it's we're including the casting and everything that they've brought, is it Nick Offerman as a? If we're including F- the casting, which Petty? I wish we weren't, because <laughs> I think George I could have won. As, as I mean, I mean, George Clooney is 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 too old to to do even like North by Northwest Cary Grant visually for me. He might be the same age roughly, so if I had to pick between theirs, uh, I would pick mine. <laughs> <laughs> Noted. And then all right, Offerman, I, th- I got Offerman, all, sure. I think I got all your takes. All right, <laughs> calling this one. Dan, before I call it, anything you'd like to add? Uh, well, I mean, so many things I could fact check. <laughs> <laughs> I can't fact check Donald Trump's drug use, unfortunately. I can put I can, can put the date his daughter thing in perspective, which was that they asked him, <laughs> they asked him what he would think if his daughter posed for Playboy, oh. and he said that he didn't think that she would do it, but he said she does have a nice figure. I've said that if Ivanka weren't my daughter, perhaps I would be dating her. See this movie? What the fuck are you doing? What the fuck are you going to choose? Fucking well, a, but he did follow movie. that up by asking, is that horrible? And you call so. <laughs> He is a real All right. man. Scary. I think based on, I think, yes, we want to watch that movie, but I don't know if the casting was sold. I, I, mean, I think casting. we want to learn more about it. And Nick Offerman deserves a role. Spencer gets the point. Right. It's anyone's game. We need Nick Offerman. <laughs> Nick Offerman's the nicest dude, the coolest dude. I want to see Nick Offerman do more. <laughs> Round four. All right, I'm going to try and book through these because I think we're going to be crazy long. Jack Reacher 2 was announced for the fall. I'm not sure if that was the sequel everyone was super dying for, but they're whatever, they're making it. So Brian Moody III, Moody 3959 on Twitter asked us, what standalone action film most deserves a sequel? So if we could pick anyone that never got its own sequel or uh, what, what would we take or how would we do it right? Um, and we're going to start this time with Alicia. I would, for me, uh, John Wick was a really nice surprise. It's getting a sequel. Year. Yeah, it's getting a sequel. but that Not could, out yet, so we'll count it. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so I'm pitching that that would be perfect for a sequel because, uh, first of all, it was a surprise hit. It was made for $20 million, made $80 million worldwide. It also had a really simple premise, you know, kill the cute dog, bad Eastern European guys, you will die. So you, the possibilities for a sequel are endless story-wise. Plus, I think it also had an interesting mythology, that whole hotel that they go to where they have a different currency and different rules and I want to see more of that world explored plus Keanu Reeves doing all the headshots the cool action it had a great style yeah I'm thinking I'm back I want to see more of John Wick so he's back in action he's okay back. got it Spencer what's yours uh I'm going with the rock to rock harder <laughs> this Michael is, Bay's uh, The Rock. Michael Bay's The Rock. Um, this is a movie that, for some reason, didn't get a sequel. Prob- I, well, for any number of reasons. But I think that they left the door open. Uh, Nick Cage was still alive. Sean Connery goes off into the distance. He's got a microfilm with all the FBI's like, de- and CIA's deepest secrets on it. And now Nick Cage is a wanted criminal, basically, because he let the most wanted fugitive go. And he has all the secrets in the world in this little microfilm. So he gets caught. He gets thrown to Gitmo, the modern rock, you know, in uh, Guantanamo Bay, <laughs> Cuba, which is where Sean Connery happens to be hiding out. So Sean Connery gets himself captured, gets himself placed in the same cell as When do you see this Nick movie Cage. coming out? <laughs> right now, but like a couple years ago. Uh, but it's, uh, it's happening right now. And, uh, you know, of course, they're in there with a bunch of the most wanted terrorists and some guys who shouldn't be there. Who they, so it's kind of Con Air. It's kind of Con Air-ish. <laughs> Thank you, Andy. It's kind of Con Air-ish of uh, those char- Sean Connery coming out of retirement to do this movie, a return to form for Michael Bay, and then breaking out of Guantanamo Bay prison. Wow, okay. Uh, Max, what's your take? Uh, great standalone action movies that I would want to see sequels to. The Matrix, Pirates of the Caribbean. Uh, I would love a third Terminator movie. Because <laughs> this first and second were so good. You gotta pick one. Uh, well, then let's go ahead and do one uh, that I really feel would have the most relevance and be the best, which is uh, probably The Last Starfighter. The Last Starfighter focused, if you haven't seen it, The Last Starfighter in the, fo- in the 80s focused on the idea that an arcade game in which you flew a spaceship was actually being used as a recruitment tool for an alien race who needed someone to come save them. And of course, the person who got sent to save them was a teenager. Uh, now, with video game technology the way it is, with uh, immersive game technology the way it is, the idea of this is huge. I think doing a sequel, not a reboot, a sequel involving those characters and then bringing in a new crop of, like, basically gamers. But, you know, the, the issue is, what is even a gamer anymore? Everybody plays video games. I mean, your cell phone is a fucking video game in its own way. Everything is based on instant response. And you could do something there hasn't been 
in a while, which is a really cool dogfight space movie, fun dogfights in space, while at the same time doing a really sweet Ghostbustery ETE character comedy within it, which is what the original Last Starfighter is. And I think that is a fucking awesome idea. And I think if you announce that via like a marketing campaign where you play the game, you know, like it's a free download app. Oh my God, the people who are the best at this app are being abducted by aliens. You know, there's almost no good movies about video games. There aren't, but there is one and it's called The Last Starfighter. Good thoughts guys, free for all, break it up. It sounds like pixels. (laughs) <laughs> it sounds like fucking nothing like this. people like a, a group of friends being recruited who are the best at their video games to go take on the that's the, the premise of last star uh, you, yeah. you, okay so they share a premise yo right? dude matrix and dark city basically the same movie <laughs> yo man the um, 13th floor that's like the matrix, matrix and the necromancer but anyways the the pixels uh, last starfighter uh, i don't know what that voice was that was me being like guy <laughs> discussing movie in the back of the store in, in new york dude i don't know Oh, dude, that movie sucked, bro. Yeah, I've kind of given up on video game movies. I love video games. I want them to succeed, but there seems to be something inherent in yeah, gamers I don't know why, making because it has jump such a great screen. mythology. Well, it's because like can Hit I tell Man, you? I'm, I, it's a great, it's a great, it's a great, uh, it's a great movie, uh, Last Starfighter, and I want to make a sequel to that movie that happens to be about video games. Mm-hmm. You know, they advertised American Ultra as a stoner movie. It's not a stoner movie. It's an action movie that has stoners in it. The problems with your ideas. Uh, is number one, Sean Connery has been out of action as an actor yeah, for ten scary. years. How and cool would it be to bring him out. back? He, he has very, he has senile dementia and is too old. Yeah, he can't remember. He can't lines get out anymore. of bed. Michael Sad. Bay, Michael Bay has not delivered us a good movie in tw- since The Rock. What an yeah. opportunity for him to make a comeback. Okay, and one last problem, <laughs> big one. big problem here, Rock Harder. Yeah. If I saw, the movie, <laughs> uh, I, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, like a, a really cool trailer for The Last Starfighter. Is so much more exciting to me, more exciting to me than another sequel to a movie from the '90s. And what was I forgot what you John Wick. John Wick already has a sequel, so it's cheating. I mean, it's it's you should have to pick a new one because it's not fair to you. Well, I I picked it. You know what you get a sequel? Okay. <laughs> you pick it. I'm gonna stand yes. by her pick. You know what you get a sequel? That movie Chronicle. That would have been <laughs> yeah. a cool yeah. movie. To get a sequel. That would have been a cool sequel. I yeah. really like Chronicle. Uh, <laughs> Why no. don't you pitch that one, dude? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with me. You'd think I would have thought of that by now. <laughs> Gosh. It's so hard to eat bananas. <laughs> what if I was just like a uh, complete yeah. idiot? I mean, sir, thoughts on Starfighter? I love the last Starfighter. I saw it like on on cable. I think you insisting on it being a sequel is a mistake. It should be a reboot because no one alive cares about that movie. I mean, not as many people do uh, that no, I would. I think it if has such a, a great. Premise. Premise. You're right, dude. It Mad Max. Why would you ever make a sequel to Mad Max? You should just make a fucking reboot. Why didn't we reboot Mad Max? And well, it turned we out we sort of did. I no, mean, Mad didn't. Max has no continuity. What's the continuity from? I don't remember how the last Starfighter ended. Um, the last Starfighter ended. He's, he's a big hero, and he's. I think he's headed back to Earth. So then, so video games being recruitment tools are just like a known factor on Earth now. No, like every, every no, kid's like, never, I'm gonna go to space. I'm gonna go to space. No, they never. It's all secret, dude. He gets abducted in secret. He goes and saves everybody, same and guy? then he comes home. Sa- yeah, it, same it would, guy. But it's it a different st- game now. It would start with the same guy being contacted by the aliens and being like, "We're having trouble." I mean, you want me to pitch it? It's Do you just have any a, quarters? It yeah. just, it's, well, no, no, no. They would, they, they, it would also have the thing where there's like an arcade machine and the kids are like, you know, the like 15-year-old kids are like, what the fuck is this? Uh, I actually saw Last Starfighter for the first time just about a year ago. How does it, how, what's the very end? And, and I really enjoyed it. Yeah, he comes back, he's a big hero. But I, he's not a big hero on Earth. No. He just has new confidence. Yeah. And because it's a teen, it's But a I teen. always said I want to see a, a reboot of it just because I like that premise and I like that storyline. I think there's so much that could be done with it that would appeal to a younger audience today. You're saying over now a sequel. It's so, yeah, now it's well, I think it's, it's, dated a, it's, a rebu- it's a reboot cool. He's in it. <laughs> as the, as the, it is. It's, it's, he's in it as like Obi-Wan. Mad Max. Well, sort of. It's He's in it as Obi-Wan. And then there's a new crop of three, a girl... A you know a, a another guy and then a guy and they they are great on their iPhones maybe two girls and or, you know it's you once the advertising the opportunity of doing My people game. are good at video games your life isn't sad your life the the people who are trolling you and being a piece of shit to you their lives are sad it's like you're you, a hero you're a fucking hero in real life and that if they made it a good movie all right pixels he's he's <laughs> he's passionate about it I just yeah, need, I those are all, well, one of them is the president of the united states last but it's so kevin I, james that's taking hilarious. your final last final statements quickly yeah. on why the other two don't work spencer i feel like i said i don't have anything else to say about last starfire um the uh, uh john wick i feel like 
it kind of blew its wad. We have the surprise is over of seeing Keanu be a badass and headshot all these people. I want to see more. This of that. has like Taken Two written all over it to me. <laughs> of like, we're gonna up the ante. What, what are they gonna kill? That, you just punch her what, in the. Oh <laughs> what are they gonna kill after well, they kill his dog? It's like. Keanu, he's back. John Wick is back. He's yeah, shooting more they, people. It's still dark. It's the same tone. You're going to more characters. He has new dog. He has a new, a new dog. dog. He does have a puppy. Are they going to kill the puppy now? It's like, oh. Don't stop helping. <laughs> I, I, I just think the, the beautiful thing about John Wick, it was a cool movie, but it was the surprise of it. Of yes. being like, this movie came out of nowhere. Wow, Keanu Reeves is a badass. Oh, my God, they killed a dog. And the same thing with Taken but, of Liam Neeson. Wow, this guy is a badass. Yeah, and then Taken too. It's if, like, if it hadn't oh, sustained great. itself for the whole movie, then the surprise wouldn't have worked. Like it would be just been like, oh, cool, he's kicking butt. But because it had so much to it, it also fun didn't. To it watch, also it the cool great. thing about John Wick is that it didn't explain itself. Yeah. Which a sequel might do. So your idea is bad. <laughs> your idea is bad. And my Not idea is great. Not necessarily. <laughs> 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 I'm great. Order. He's gone full Order. Superman. He's gone rogue. <laughs> Man of Steel, actually. <laughs> Dan, yeah, anything yeah. you're going to add here before I try and oh, make boy. Up that, um, this madness? Yeah, John Wick is the wheels are turning on that. There's been talk of a Last Starfighter sequel, but it's always that nebulous, like the original there's screenwriter, a talk like, of the oh, I heard everything. things. Yeah, there's always yeah. talk. And then, uh, yeah, the guy that starred in The Last Starfighter, I didn't know this, also played Michael Brody in Jaws the Revenge. So, oh. you know, good movie, bad movie. <laughs> well, you can recast him. Yeah, you can recast him. No, it's not saying it's a negative. It's just a little trivia bit. A little, little piece of trivia for you. Jaws the Revenge. Oh. That's four, right? Yes, with Michael Caine. It's amazing. Fucking movie. <laughs> that yeah. fucking I'm movie. I'm quoting my shirt. I'm quoting my shirt, this guys. It's tough. This is tough. Uh, I'm sorry I destroyed Oh, it's fine. No, oh, what happened? Oh, oh, no, no. Oh, no. 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 This We're is, having fun. It's all anarchy. <laughs> <laughs> it's broken down on movie Everybody fights. listening to this loud screen. By God. Over all of our fingers. Go ahead, oh, Alicia. Yeah. Through like this. Yeah. All right. Man of Steel <laughs> happened on our table here. All right. <laughs> to try and... Uh, <laughs> this was legitimately tough. I think I'm going to take... Taking the fact that the, the, I'm taking away the time, which is what I think your the biggest argument against yours was, just because I feel like what's the only moment most deserves sequel. Also, that movie stands perfectly well alone they and doesn't. All, its premise. They all do. Last Starfighter is a whole universe of characters. The Rock is two people. But because that movie was so silly and the thing you pitch is kind of fun, I, I just I think you also just gave me the best arguments against theirs, which I didn't feel like I got from the other two people. And that's what ultimately put me over the edge for Spencer to get All the right. points. I wasn't focusing on Spencer's because I thought it was obviously a bad call. <laughs> I, I, I made, I'm in fun. And Judo. just gets in there. I made a, I made <laughs> round, a rookie mistake. Round five. Under the radar. As we all know, Deadpool is a superhero getting an R-rated, R-rated movie. Uh, so Sean Michaels on Twitter, pretty gerba, asked us, what superhero movie uh, besides Deadpool would you like to see an R-rated movie? Now, it can be an existing or someone we've never seen before. Uh, anybody is fair game here. And Spencer, is, it's your turn. Uh, just give me the quick pitch. Who are you picking? I can't believe I won for Rock 2, Rock Harder. <laughs> I know. It's a weird <laughs> I can't either. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cool. Um, I want an R-rated uh, Doctor Doom movie. Uh, clearly, we can't do uh, Fantastic Four right, so let's switch it up. Let's get our first movie from the villain's perspective. And this is like superhero Scarface. This is a, this is a bad guy's rising to power, but there are redeemable qualities about him. Um, I don't want to get into Dr. Doom's whole backstory here, but he starts, he always has a good reason from his perspective for everything he's doing, which is what makes a great villain and what makes him sympathetic. So he's, you know, he's the kind of guy that conquers the world and then gives it up because he, there's no challenge anymore. He, he is a dictator, but he solves world hunger and poverty. And then I love uh, the idea of having a villain movie, uh, a superhero movie, where the Fantastic Four are just kind of on the periphery. Like they just, you know, he he runs across Reed Richards in college, doesn't make a huge impression. He always has his own agenda, and these people are just kind of pests getting in his way. Um, that I think has not been done before, and be, the details of his story are so horrific that I think you need an R rating to tell it. Max, it's your turn. Why the fuck do people keep trying to make Fantastic Four dark? I I, I don't you tell us. <laughs> I I don't understand. I don't understand. Um, sorry, uh, that's nothing against your movie, but it is. Uh, no, I'm sorry, Spencer. But no, uh, there's a character named Moon Knight, uh, who's a Marvel character, who is, struggles with schizophrenia, isn't sure if the Egyptian gods communicating with him, telling him to be a superhero, are real, uh, and yet goes out there and beats the living fuck out of people in the most violent way possible, uh, because he's told to by voices in his head. Uh, I feel like the opportunity here is huge. 
And I'm not going to pitch you specifics. If you just Google Moon Knight, you'll see that my argument should win this one. It's a character that is not exploited enough by Marvel. He is essentially a darker alternative to Daredevil and Spider-Man. You know, you, you have a bunch of guys in New York, right? You got Daredevil, Luke Cage, Iron Fist, Spider-Man, uh, Punisher. Uh, I can just keep going and going. The Sleepwalker, I believe, lives in New York. I love comics. And so you have to trust me when I say a Moon Knight movie done R-rated in the tone of a Fincher movie of a guy who starts hearing a voice that says, I am an ancient Egyptian god. You have been chosen. And yet has already been diagnosed with schizophrenia. And yet this voice seems realer. His personal life is falling apart. But by God, he's going to find his sanity. He's going to fucking make himself. It's an origin movie that plays like a thriller. Because it's a dude. I mean, he's not even in the Moon Knight costume until like more than halfway through the movie. And you do a really cool reinvention of the Moon Knight costume that looks like the Moon Knight costume. Because the best thing about having a crazy superhero is when they're in the suit, they can look crazy. I despise dark. The I despise most dark superhero stuff. I think dark superhero stuff... The exception to the rule, or why it's become popular, because it's the most basic thing you can do with superheroes, is do the dark version. Make them zombies. Batman's old now. What if Batman killed someone? And all you do when you do that, because everyone's pitching Watchmen. Every fucking kid you talk to in a comic book store is like, what if Superman raped someone? <laughs> like that, and you're like, it's been done. Have you read The Boys? Have you read Powers? It's been done better than you could do it. It's been done better than I could do it. Watchmen. It's the most basic thing you can do. What's compelling and what needs an R rating about Moon Knight that makes it different from these other superhero things is that the character is dealing with an adult issue. He is dealing with mental illness. And that is captivating. That is compelling. And seeing that as a superhero and at the end, still the asp aspirational, he overcomes it. Fucking awesome. Got it. I like that one. Alicia, Alicia, what's your pick? I'm going with a character you mentioned, Max, and a character that I don't feel like has had a proper chance on the big screen, and that's Punisher. Mm. We got two Punisher movies that haven't been that great. I did really like, do you remember that 2012 like short fan film, Dirty yeah. Laundry? Yeah, of course. Online? I really liked that, that, that cool style, and that's what made me personally interested in that character. And we haven't seen anything like that on the big screen, so this character obviously lends himself to an R rating because it's dark and, and very violent. Plus, and Could this be the same person from, the deck, uh, from Netflix that's coming? Oh, John um, Bernthal? Yeah, do you think it's... I mean, I, I really TBD, like him as, as an actor, so it could, um, but I also like the fact that Tom Hardy has spoken about how he would love to play Frank Castle, and uh, I would love to see uh, just Tom Hardy in everything. So, yeah, I'd love to see that, and I just feel like Punisher needs a better chance. Now the rights have gone back to Marvel Studios too, so they have a chance to do something cool. Uh, all right, guys. Fight. I'm just rebuffing cool. you guys right off the top. Can you check? Can you check something for me? Absolutely. Are both Punisher movies that have already come out rated R? One of them is. Uh, no. I know the Dolph Lundgren one definitely was. Let me check okay, on that. There are three then, uh, Punisher movies that have come Punisher out. Punisher Warzone was a hard R. Punisher. The, all sure. three Punisher films that have come out. Yeah. Are that has R. To be good. I was just saying it needs I, to be. Can I say something? Character. Can I say something? I like two of those Punisher movies. I thought Warzone was a lot of fun, mm -hmm. and I thought the Thomas Jane one was an interesting thriller that happened But would Punisher. you love to see Punisher? I don't want to see it again. I don't need to see him again. I'm interested in seeing him with other characters. Your idea. Well, he could be with Spider-Man. Yeah. But it, but, right, but I've seen... What I'm saying is that <laughs> you, you, for the second time, are pitching a movie that already exists. Uh, there are three Punisher... And, and I love Punisher. I'm, there's nothing against Frank, but we've seen it three times. Your idea is makes me insane. Oh, uh, uh, and, and, I like that. Let's hear why. Uh, because Victor, despite being a really interesting character, does not deserve his own movie. Again, we have seen three. We have seen Doctor Doom in movies three times now. Yeah, we have yet to see a movie. Not, like, not oh. his story, though. It's not Doom's story. You he's, really he's you trust the, them to make his story? I didn't Lost say who area? was involved, who was making yeah, who's it. Them? <laughs> yeah, who's them? The them is like a big question. I'm was. saying them. I'm saying, I'm saying, and also, Dr. Doom, what's cool about him is that he's the Fantastic Four villain because he's a douche. He's not an R-rated douche. I mean, he gets badly fucked up, but nothing about the character Dr. Doom, to me, says this has to be an R-rated movie. Your idea Here's of it as a villain Scarface is awesome. But it is not an R-rated movie, and that's what the question was. Moon Knight is. So yeah, I, I got noted. Good, good point. So you guys are on the ropes. What, 
respond. Well, I wasn't as uh, familiar with Moon Knight either, so I did have to Google him. And I still don't know what he is. <laughs> like, he's so many, he's got multiple personalities, a bunch of different origin stories. He's hearing voices. He has Egyptian powers, but he's also like a martial artist. And he, like, he he's been I, I can't Batman, get my head he? around the no character. Way? And I don't think uh, the pitch, like, really. Uh, 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 solidified who this guy is. Is he? Uh, you want me to pitch you a movie, a well, midnight movie you'd want to go see right now? People, uh, I don't know if we have time. I'd like to hear it. Um, I didn't the, say who was involved. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> the uh, yeah, he does. The knock on him was uh, was he's just Batman in white, which I, he didn't seem like it. But then, but I was trying to find. So what is he? And I still don't know. There was also I Easter egg wasn't there is. in uh, Captain America: Winter Soldier, which kind of spoke a bit about. It. Like it, a little Easter egg dropped in there along with Stephen Strange. About Moon Knight? Like yeah. Stephen, yeah. Oh, yes. Dan's going to look that up, please. I think. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It could be. Could be Moon Knight Easter eggs. So oh. he sounds cool, but he sounds like you need to do some serious, like, let's just stick to one Moon Knight story because he's been in a lot of different hands and everyone okay. has a kind of different ish take on him. Okay, we did. We stuck to it, and the movie's out. The movie's out. It's an R rated Mr. Robot in tone, David Finchery, really good action movie about Moon Knight. Separate the, from all the other characters? In uh, the yeah, is he in the Marvel universe? Maybe he is, maybe he isn't. isn't. I didn't think we were supposed to say who was involved. I thought we no. were supposed to say which character you feel would do the best and deserves an R-rated film. I think dealing with an adult issue in an intelligent, compassionate way and turning them into a fucking superhero is risky, fun, and has big opportunities to be a really good movie. I Don't get me wrong. I love Punisher and Doctor Doom, but they don't need to be R-rated movies. Also, Moon Knight, cheaper than either of those movies. He is very street level, but he has cosmic powers. But it's yeah, like, but the, you can do that in After Effects now. Okay, I, yeah, I, sure. I, <laughs> you can, I can do I can do a really cool Moon Knight movie in my garage, but no one will see it, and it doesn't it won't get the attention and love a big scale Moon Knight movie. And I think so to me, we'll do Doctor one. Doom is is interesting only when he's with Fantastic Four, and that feels like we've done Fantastic Four, and I don't think anyone's gonna go there for a, a while. Well, I want my Doctor Doom movie to come out first, and then you can do the like Band of Brothers Letters from Iwo Jima thing, <laughs> where you see the whole story from the Fantastic Four's perspective. So are you imagining it like you imagine like the last Fantastic Four movie didn't happen? D- never happened. Oh, right. Okay, never so, happened. so then the tone you're so maybe, for Fantastic so maybe Four none of the Punisher dark. movies ever happened. It's, it's a, a fun <laughs> comic. <laughs> All right, Dan, anything you're going to add here? So... Uh, yes, I, I always think the Thomas Jane one was PG-13 for some reason, but no, they were all three. <laughs> Punishers were rated R. Well, and yes, he the, needs another one. <laughs> um, Sitwell does say in Winter Soldier, when he drops the yeah, Stephen Strange thing, it. he references that they're having trouble with a man in Cairo, which mm. a lot of people said because uh, Moon Knight's powers d- derive from Egyptian gods. Yeah, so but that could also be, I mean, that <clears throat> could, it could be, be any number of This people. is, again, this is fans kind of running God, rampant spe- speculation, but similarly are speculating that this could be a Moon Knight reference. Maybe not setting him up, but a reference to Moon Knight. Okay. Uh, yeah. April, how are you doing over there? Having fun? Very much so. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, you want to switch? <laughs> you are doing great. Uh, yeah, you're all doing Hi. great. You're all doing great. Uh, I got to go off the arguments. Got off the arguments. Sadly, he did sort of shoot you down, Alicia. Sadly, you good at that. It was nice. good, but he did snipe you down there. And then it came down to you two. And I just think uh, his arguments and his pitches were a little stronger in that, even though I'm unfamiliar, I'm not going to use that against him. So, Moon Knight, R rated movie, made more sense to me of why. I don't, you didn't tell me why Doctor Doom needs to be R, is really where it got stuck. Doom. So, Max is back on the board. Kneel before Doom. With uh, two points. So, one more, two. With Max, two to Spencer, and one for Alicia. So unless Alicia gets this, then we'll go to a three-way tie. Yeah, probably not. Um, we'll see how it goes. Don't, no, don't. Uh, we'll see. Round six. This is a fun one. This is a nice little fun one. Force Friday brought us a lot of cool new toys. We're excited for Star Wars. Jack DeFranco at JackWagon85 asked on Twitter, what's the best movie toy? Now, it has to be a specific merchandise from a toy, uh, from a movie. Um, and Max, we're starting with you. What was the best movie toy? I've realized that I have an answer, but I, I don't know if it counts. Will you tell me if this counts? Sure. I know which one you pitched. Yeah, the Ghostbusters Firehouse. Yes, it totally okay. counts. Okay, but that was the animated series. Oh, yeah, sure. Okay, so when I was a kid, <laughs> the first stories I told uh, were my were by myself in my room. It's and, up there for Vanity Fair. And I would, I would sit, and I would do this. I would sit, and I would imagine very vividly in my head the, the, the story happening. And the action figures ultimately weren't. They weren't, it didn't, I didn't need to act everything out with them the way they always show kids doing in movies. And I don't think anybody does. You just hold them and they're like totems of that character. And they, they talk and you see the scenes so clearly. 
But in order to really tell the good stories, you need the good totems. So you need the Donatello who does this. You need the Donatello who does that. You need the the, the fucking Stay Puft Man, even if he's way too small and the Ghostbusters are like his size. <laughs> the, <laughs> the, to is the, totem, the totem exists, and you, you own that character, and it's like having access to a character, and, and you, you suddenly are touching it. And what was great, and the reason the... I, I don't know a lot about toys. I, don't, I can't name a bunch of toys, but the reason this one stuck out to me so clearly is because I had the firehouse. So all of the adventures, since I had the firehouse, I could do anything with the Ghostbusters because I'd always have a starting point for the story. And I get uh, Venkman, and they're in there, and like, what if, oh, Ka he man, what are you doing here? You came down to the firehouse? It was a location. Which it was an, in an interior and an exterior, and it didn't matter that there was like a pole that they could go up and down. What mattered is that I now it's a dollhouse. Suddenly, you now have a location for all of your little guys to live, and there were so few location toys. I mean, they existed, but like ultimately, this shit, all this fucking look, Tommy can turn into all these gimmicks. All the different colors of Batman they sold after the movie or the metal suit, none of those ultimately mattered because what you needed was the most basic toy his arms needed to go up and down like that. If you were lucky, they went in like that and out like that. And those were the cool ones or the Spider-Mans that had the, the sockets in the legs so he could compose them in any different one. I remember the first Spider-Man toy like that. I was like, this is the dopest thing that's ever happened to me. But like that firehouse was a beginning for play. It was a place for play to happen. It enabled your imagination. It helped you, and I loved my fire. And good features, yeah. Which we'll get. I'm sure talk more. Alicia, what's your what's your toy? Okay, going with one for purely nostalgic reasons. The only toy that I ever collected, and that was I've mentioned this before in movie fights, the uh, Lamb Before Time <laughs> Pizza Hut puppets. Oh, I love those. Oh, there they are. Just seeing them, like, <laughs> I have them. So excited! I had them all. You imagine it was 1988. Little Alicia Malone, seven years old, convincing her parents to go to Pizza Hut over and over again, even though I didn't like the food. Just <laughs> because I wanted these toys. Bargain price of, of 99 them. cents each. I collected them all. I took them to school. I played with them at lunchtime <laughs> with my friends. And I just have such a love for them. Even seeing the picture just makes me so excited. So that for me was forever. It'll ever forever be the best movie toy. I think it, the movie toy is, is about what you bring to it. And that was just such a special moment in my life personally. So nostalgic reasons. That I one. remember all of these so far. Spencer, what I are you picking? Uh, okay, I'm going to take the nostalgia goggles off for a second here and talk about a toy that we would actually want to play with right now. And that is... <laughs> the BB-8 Star Wars thing that they just announced that I'm about to spend $150 of my adult money oh my on. God. That thing is controlled via your iPhone and it's magic. <laughs> it's, it's just like Star Wars. It's a blend of technology and magic. Uh, at the same time. This thing will patrol your house automatically when you're not there. Uh, this thing can be controlled, it can do figure eights. I haven't even seen this movie and this is my favorite toy that's ever been made. I don't need to see this movie, and that's my favorite toy that's ever been made. You're gonna I, have I, a bad time when the movie comes out and it turns out he's racist. Yeah, he's doing a Jar Jar voice. No. But it's gonna, it, I'm so ready to like get this thing and mess around with it and have races with other ones and just have uh, and do this as a as a full grown adult. Um, and I think that my favorite toys as a kid were Ninja Turtles. I love GI Joes. I I, uh, I had the Land Before Time puppets. But if you put that next to me. Uh, the BB-8, you transport that back to 1988 and put it next to a Land Before Time puppet, I am like clearing that <laughs> off the table and picking up this magical thing. You're like $150. You're also, by the, way, by the way, by the way, you are not only fucked because you're not going to be able to use it because you don't have an iPhone. Well, the <laughs> iPhone, iPhone comes with it. Well, <laughs> oh, the iPhone comes oh, wow. with it. It's, it's now. about to change it's human history. Yes. It's worse than the Almanac. Hey, my kids came home with this device. Okay, Come easier way is you... You, you, you have your iPhone, you get them. You take it and then... Does it the come with a charger too? Yeah, yeah, you take child me into the future. Let's do it that oh, okay. way. We, we bring child me into the future okay. and sit down all my favorite toys child and then Child in the future? You're winning right now. Where uh, yeah, is he? And then... Uh, <laughs> where is he? <laughs> He's so cute. Don't hurt him. And then he, uh, he... Yeah, he wants to play with that. I don't care what else you put in front of him, I no matter how would, many much family would attachment your parents he has to be like, uh, Who cares what my parents are saying? I would steal it. On a toy? 
Yeah, I that mean, you'll that's, probably get sick of pretty quickly. If it's I'm cool. eight, that's their problem. You know, Christmas is coming up. Like, <laughs> I'm, I'm whining. I'm doing whatever it takes to get that thing. I think 99 cents is a better option and using your own imagination rather than using your iPhone well, to control something. Fact check. Are we, are we, are, with the purchase of a pizza, correct? Are we, <laughs> are we, are we that's free for all? That's I will true. check. I will check. It comes are we with in the, the free for all? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah it's free for all. It. So those are both cool toys. <laughs> Them, the Land Before Time guys coming up on screen was like a weird thing where I'd completely forgotten that existed. And then I saw them and I went, cool. I uh, I'm just going to go ahead and say that your choices aren't as good as my one. <laughs> uh, because uh, I, I, think, I think the Land Before Time guys, as fun as it is to anally violate a dinosaur, <laughs> there are only there are so many adventures you can have with dudes on your fingers. And uh, I think with your imagination. With your <laughs> imagination. Yeah. Here we go. Imagination and my, a playground. There, there is a picture of my Land Before Time guys in my firehouse. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> Suddenly they had somewhere to be. I, I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna poke holes in you, in your guys. I'm not gonna defend mine because I think my explanation of mine, which is that it enables the imagination to do things that are more fun, uh, is I just stick by that explanation. And I'm sure you guys will. Poke holes in it. Uh, but it did, I believe, can you fact check that I think the, the firehouse came with a, a guy? I will see what came oh, with yeah, the firehouse. Oh, yeah, that's what I was going to say. Like, yeah. is it fun by itself? Well, also, by the way, the when, I was, when I was little, this was a fucking spaceship. So all I need is the house. But, uh, but Could anything be a house then? No, if not not, not that, the house. You create mm. your not house the house from. Your... Well, then by that logic, no toys are necessary. No. They yeah. Aren't. So let's use our mind. Okay, so you have to disqualify <laughs> that argument because then, then. So you need toys to play in your house. Yeah. Is the thing. Yeah. I, uh, okay. Uh, so. To so by itself. I think by itself, I can put anything in there, and it'll be just as fun. Uh, whereas a toy by himself, he can go on adventures in the... Oh, poke, you're, poke these holes. Go okay. Get your poke, poke, poke. Hole with yours, <laughs> anally violating dinosaurs, not that fun in in perpetuity. What is it? Perpetuity. Perpetuity. That's perpetuity. And, and yours, the big problem with the BB-8 is, number one, you need an iPhone to control it. Number two, I haven't seen that movie. None of us have. Uh, and, and it's this big, no, 150 bucks. Number three, price. <laughs> Number f number four, it's very cool, but so are a million other things. Uh, okay, well, we're not comparing anything to anything. I mean, there's lots you of are, cool you things are in the world. It's an electronic device. That, that you ghost house wasn't cheap in the day either. It uh, wasn't $150, <laughs> well, and you didn't need another component to make it work. While I look up the price, I can tell you that the firehouse did not include an action figure, but it did include slime that you could pour through the ceiling. Oh, great. Oh. So, yeah, now you have a slimy house. Oh, boy. <laughs> I'm a kid. I, I want to live in a slimy that house. That was a pain to clean up. How do you think those guys got me into that van? <laughs> a lot of, mine had a lot of dried slime on it. <laughs> great. I'll use my magic to fill this, this slimy is, house. This uh, is a good episode of Movie Fight. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, I'm I take issue to the fact that we're assigning like social responsibility to these toys. Like they need to uh, be aff affordable to everyone. They need to encourage imagination. This is just cool in a vacuum. It's magic. You don't know how it works. It works with the That's, technology we have of today. You can Google how, how it works. I don't want to go on your iPhone. I don't want an iPhone no. that you need to operate it. Stop trying to Lucas this. This is not a midichlorian thing. We're not going to like ex it ruin is, the magic though. of this. It is though. It works with my iPhone. It, we're not going to. I have to. Oh. No one tell me how this works. I don't want to know how it works. It's magic. It's magic. It's magic. But uh, what what do you do with it? You patrol for a little you while patrol, and then you go. You make it turn around. Cool. You, you show off your friends and they get all this get thing, jealous. This thing is on a shelf in a month. Yeah, exactly. It'll lose. It'll lose its fun after a short no, while. You know, I'm gonna. Need Need to do something in line for the Force Awakens, so you make everyone jealous. <laughs> oh, and dude, the race in line for the happen. Force Awakens <laughs> will be fun, and then the Force Awakens comes out. Anyway, so <laughs> you I have mean, a slimy it, house. But, but yeah, I do, okay. Okay. Uh, maybe so, if I'm being irresponsible, I, mean, I have a slimy house. That's, <laughs> it's a lot of dried like paper towels. <laughs> you're an imaginative person. You've got you've, you've got a wild imagination, but like. You're, uh, for other kids, they're just stuck in the Ghostbusters house. Like they want to leave and go on adventures. <laughs> How many different things can you be like? Oh, hi, Janine. Like, hey, <laughs> hey, guys. You're right. You're right. And the little kids will have all of the opportunity they need to go on adventures once they put away the BB-8 because they have the internet on their iPhone that they need to have. Yeah. God uh, bless them. Uh, <laughs> final thought, Alicia. 
<laughs> oh, uh, yeah. Make well, sure you got your last word in. Land Before Time toys. Uh, yeah, well, ones you can use with your imagination. When I was a kid, I didn't think about the anal stuff. I was just having a great time with <laughs> Petrie puppet, yeah. and Spike. And, you know, I had such a good time. Uh, BB-8, tooth. I think you just lose. It'll lose its fun quickly. It's really fun to have right this second because it's yeah. the hot thing of the moment. But give it a month or two, I think it'll be whatever. And the ghost house is awesome, but you just need a toy to play in it. Dan. Yes. Any thoughts to add up while I try and gather my thoughts? I can't this? wait to hear what the what the answer on this price one. of ghost <laughs> ha- price of ghost house, please. I cannot. I looked. I cannot find the original. <laughs> okay, I'll tell, you, I'll tell adjusted. you. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. It's probably neighborhood of fifty dollars. And a price Sounds of a pizza. Sounds about right. And back the then, cost, which at, was pretty. That was a lot back then. Yeah, but we're talking about back then. In the 1980s, that's a billion dollars. Yeah, yeah. That's no, a billion but, dollars. Check but, the math on that. But uh, thanks, Obama. But no, so. <laughs> So no no, but so price of a Peter Venkman action figure six dollars. I did find the the the, the figures retail for it's five ninety nine. Yeah. So I mean like, come on. All right. All right. <laughs> and you don't even have to go to Domino's. I'm gonna make a call. <laughs> Pizza Hut. Pizza, Pizza Hut. Pizza Hut. Uh, Pizza. But you had to go for five. Based weeks. on the arguments, I didn't think this one would win, but I think Spencer gave a really good argument with. Which one would you put if you had these three toys here? Would the kid gravitate towards? <laughs> and it is magic. It is completely true. It's Everything not, you said. You just uh, have the toy on the table. But that thing can't even makes make me it feel work. like a kid. You're right. It just it's like how are they doing that? And the fact that it's there. It, it's I didn't realize still. that we were including an iPhone in our office. Well, <laughs> whatever works. works. I'm sure your yours, Millennium Falcon yours drone. still needs a I'm toys kill to that go kid's in the house. No, 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 anything, yeah, do, anything, yours needs arms. Anyway, anything can be a toy. Not anything can be an iPhone. <laughs> True, but the, I'm right. It also I'm works sorry. on Android. It also, it also works, works on Android, Android. guys. <laughs> Yeah. I lost. Okay, I get it. <laughs> I mean, it's that, I damn it. that BB-8 is magical. Spencer's right. Good <laughs> argument. I give it to Spencer. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Kill that kid. Who thought they still, Star Wars one still pop some right. out like that that blew us I all away I thought I did pretty magical. well with Land You were very time. close. <laughs> it's a puppet. You were very close. <laughs> Nostalgia goggles. <laughs> Without them, they're... It's it, tiny. It, that's the problem. It's I know. I know. He's a lot smaller it than It is I, really, I really small. Not the one they rolled out there on stage. It's barely higher than the baseboard on this wall. Yo, that BB-8 toy is a piece of shit. That <laughs> brings Twitter. us to the speed uh, if you want to round. send me a free one so I we can have, look at it. Yeah, send me a free exactly. one. Send us some free yeah, ones. Yeah, send us some free we'll BB-8s and we'll it's try it out the show yeah, here. Send me two. Yeah, maybe I'll be convinced if I, I would send be convinced. One. All right, so you send me a free iPhone Three too? Spencer points, one Alicia, two Max. I'm sorry, Alicia, that knocks you out. It's all right. It's my birthday, but never mind. Happy happy belated birthday when this airs. Alicia, happy birthday. Happy birthday. You always bring it. You always bring it. Thank you for coming. This was an intense episode. That was really fun. Thanks, Woo. guys, for giving me a hard time. It was great. Uh, so we're here at the speed round. Max and Spencer are going to go in. Jesus. We are going to go to speed round. But before we do that, oh. one quick more round from our sponsor. I thank want to you. thank Loot Crate. Uh, once again, as always, go to LootCrate.com slash MovieFights. Use code MovieFights to save 10% on a new subscription. Uh, sign up by September 19th to receive September Summoner Crate. Summon crate with items from Blizzard, Kid Robot, and more. And that special item they said is amazing. Uh, Dan had some fantastic items from last month, as you know. So please uh, support uh, our show and Mo- Loot Crate and go use that promo code Movie Fights. Link in the description below on YouTube. And if you're listening on iTunes, it's lootcrate.com slash moviefights. All right. I'm having a lot of fun. Thank you for inviting Max, me. Max, I was just going to thank yeah, you. So and guys, I, come on. This is Max's yeah. first time. He didn't have as much time. He, prepared, he knows. He's passionate. I love it. When I'm passionate, I get yelled at. It's like you do. Don't yell at him. You think I don't get yelled at? Come on. He brought it. Thank you. You all brought it. But I love the passion. I lo- Sometimes it's hard to let people talk and get it. Yeah. You've been very fair. I think we've all been fair. It's been a very fun match. So thank everybody. And thanks for coming, all of you. So now let's get to the speed round. We tested this with you earlier, so you know how to do this. Yeah, I'm we fucked. Like to, we always <laughs> like to practice. You're one point down. Doesn't My mean, trademark is melting down during this. Speed I'm round. So it happens a lot, but it can change. The, t- the tides can turn very quickly. But again, fast, quick answers. We track. We practice this. That's hard for me. This is a chance to win five <laughs> more points. Um, if again, if you say the same answer at the same time, I go with whoever said it first, and then you'll have to quickly pick a second choice. Shit, I'm so. Any questions? I'm so fucked. I'm so fucked. I'm so <laughs> fucked. All right. Can you phrase it in a question? Let's start I'm the so speed fucked. round. <laughs> All right. Who would be the best director for a remake of the movie Speed? Shit. Uh, can I? Can I? 
I don't want to say it's because I'm going to be offensive because I'm going to mess up his name. But Chris the Nolan. Guy that directed Snowpiercer. Bong Bong Joon 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 Woo. Woo, yeah. Chris <laughs> Nolan. I said Chris Nolan. You said Nolan, and you got, I don't know how to say his name either. Alicia, say Bong Jin Hai. There Thank we you. go. Thank Bong Jin. Thank you. Bong Jin and, and Christopher Nolan. All right. Uh, we heard you were saying Bong Jin first. I'm going to yeah. you go ahead first, Bong Spencer. He's Time on the clock and go. He's, Sorry, I what, said Chris okay, Nolan. Okay, Tell us when you're ready, Dan. Well, yeah, you yep. can, uh, that's only for it's safe a, oh. if we both say Chris oh, Nolan. If we both say, then, okay, yeah. yeah. We good? And go ahead. Spencer. So with Snowpiercer and the host in, in certain parts, he's proven he can take a single long extended action sequence and give it character and give it uh, depth and give it uh, fill it with new surprises, which is what Speed really is. Wait, why are we saying it's okay to reboot Speed? We should never reboot Speed. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. It just dawned on me. All right. Hey, no. Hang on a second. <laughs> Max, you're talk- Nolan take, go ahead. Totally, Batman Begins is similar to Speed. When Nolan's funny, he's very funny. He needs to reinvent himself and his image. He's a master of uh, action and co- uncompromised plot lines, leveling them and following many things at once. I believe he could maintain momentum throughout the entire movie, do an amazing job, and it would be good for his career. Wow! Uh, okay. Five second rebuttal, Spencer. Uh, you don't, Speed is a simple movie. Christopher Nolan's gonna stuff it full of plot and twists and, and CGI. All right, you went off topic. I'm going to give you five seconds to go ahead. Bong Joon-ho does the same in every one of his movies. Snowpiercer is totally inconsistent, bizarre, and incoherent despite being a fun movie. (laughs) All right. I think uh, you gave away, you gave up sort of halfway did, through, yeah. and so I'm going to give that point to Max. Why I don't even need to go speed. We shouldn't reboot speed. It's yeah. movie fight, Spencer. You I'm giving get up. The fight. I'm giving up after the fact. <laughs> <laughs> three to three. All right. Question two. Both of these movies are playing on cable. Which one should we watch? The Mummy 3, Tomb of the Dragon Emperor, or Jurassic Park 3? Jurassic Park 3. Mummy 3. Jurassic Park is first. All right, think one second. Time on the clock, and go ahead, Spencer. Jurassic Park 3 is not the worst Jurassic Park sequel. It's a generic movie, but it's still an on-the-surface entertaining one. You get dinosaurs, you got people running away from dinosaurs. It's better than Brendan Fraser running around the mummy, if he's even still in it at that point. He is. Okay. All right, time on the clock for Max, and go ahead. I agree 100% that Jurassic Park 3 is not a bad movie. That said, The Mummy 3 is one of the worst movies I've ever seen. It's completely incoherent. If you are watching it on cable, it is amazing. Yetis play football. Yetis play football. It's so bad. It's amazing people don't talk about it. It's one of those movies that's worth watching if you got nothing else to do. <laughs> that, oh, surprise. That, okay, five seconds. I mean, you said it was miserable and incoherent. I don't. That's not how I want to spend my time. All right, that was off topic. I'm going to give you five seconds final. <laughs> Would you rather spend your time with something incoherent and insane or something mediocre? Mediocre. You're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Would you rather open up the floodgates now? And yeah. I think Max did bring come together and made a fantastic, fascinating uh, stance that I didn't think I would, but I'm giving it to him. Uh, Dan, does to chime in? I, I got to say... That last argument, I would rather see something amusingly <laughs> incoherent than mediocre, so I gotta go with On Max table, too. exactly. Yeah. Uh, Alicia. Yeah, I agree. Okay. That last rebuttal. Mediocre. Wow. Mediocre. mediocre. <laughs> Four to three. Now Max is in the lead. Right. See, that's how it happens here. Uh, I'm scared. <laughs> number three. Please name the best movie with girl or girls in the title. Girl Interrupted. Okay, Spencer. Uh, 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 uh. Bless you. Thank you. Uh, 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 Gotta uh, make a choice. Yeah, I can't. I can only, it was the first one. I can actually right. think of. Oh, Hold on. Sh- don't let yeah. him give a, you have five seconds. I hate to. Um, girl or girls? Uh, uh, <laughs> Just pick a movie. Uh, uh, um, uh, girls Night Out. Great. I'm going to take it. <laughs> Not Gone Girl? Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Well, you put Girl Interrupted, and we got Girls Gone Out. Okay, go ahead, Max. Girl Interrupted is a better movie than Girls Night Out. It has strong performances. It's evocative. It's emotional. It was a think piece for a generation that holds up today. Angelina Jolie is also smoking hot in it, as is Winona Ryder. It's a smart, fun, compassionate movie about something serious, and it's worth you seeing. All right, Spencer, let's hear your argument. Girls' Night Out is a smart ensemble comedy. Melissa McCarthy at the top of her game. This is like Porky's in reverse. This is really just a, a, a fantastic film that's way well, are underrated. Are you talking about? Hold on, let him talk. It's way underrated. Um, the scene, uh, uh, the scene with the with the ham sandwich is amazing. Can I can I put a stop to this? <laughs> You made up a movie? Girls Night Out is a real 80s movie. If you say so, yeah. With Melissa McCarthy, right? The ham sandwich. The ham sandwich. 
<laughs> it's legendary. I had the 80s movie in front you of me. You know, Night Out is yeah. like kind of a fun 80s yeah, movie. Yeah, 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 that one. No, that, that's the one I meant to say. It's, it's Melissa one. McCarthy in that movie. Oh my God, so no, true. it's made in 1982. I, ha I was looking at the one from 82. Try to pull a Night Falls. I appreciate <laughs> yeah. the effort. Yeah, oh God. Night close. Falls, that that's is what you just made. Someone, someone made up a movie in one of the episodes. Christian. That's what it, we, and we almost fell for it. We, lo we lost <laughs> track of De Niro and Pacino's uh, older movies. Damn it! Uh, wow, very close. Well, but girl. I think you called it out. I think uh, Max gets another point. So yeah. wait, it's still Spencer, so Spencer has. Spencer has to get these two. Oh, okay. To tie. To okay. tie. Okay. okay. What's the better movie location to visit? Better movie location to visit. I'm giving you two choices. Ready, Max? Just Are you sure ready? Harry Potter's Hogwarts or Star Wars' Jedi Temple? Harry Potter Hogwarts. Uh, Harry, Jedi Temple, Harry, Hogwarts. Oh, I, you I, have to do I, Temple say, because he I said have, Hogwarts first. Wait, Star Wars Jedi Temple, Where where is that? Like Yavin? The where Yavin they, Temple? Where they gather with Yoda, right? Wait, wait, wait. Like From you actually the... get to go there? Like it's a real place? Yeah, if you're going to go as a real place, which one would you go to? You just got to do the Jedi Temple. Oh, Jedi Temple. Great. So you're, we're going to argue that Hogwarts, ready for time on the clock? So yes, ready, ready, ready. Go ahead. Okay, the Jedi Temple is a fantastic place to take a nap. Everyone there is sitting around stroking their chin and just like <laughs> pontificating on the nature of the Force. Hogwarts is full of fun, adventure, and literal magic. Uh, if you include Diagon Alley, it's you can do anything and meet anyone there. Whereas Jedi, okay. Go ahead. Not for you, Muggle. You'd be dead in your first five minutes, kicked out, or having your mind wiped. To go to Hogwarts as a Muggle would be the least fun, shortest experience you'll never remember ever. The Jedi Temple is open to the public, and you can learn things about the history of the new and old Republic. I'm very excited to go there, especially because a lot's happened there. Who are you? <laughs> are you? Are you Voldemort? Like Muggles are allowed in there? No, and they're not. They're magical. Fr they're allowed in there. They. Uh, they no, they're not. All right, I need to fact check this I need one. to check this. No, that that, is, an important, in that is an important There are squibs that are allowed in Hogwarts well, who are Hermione magical people a born. Muggle. She this is, is not a, a muggle. She is, is mud a, blood. It's, it's different. This is just a visit. <laughs> it's not to go to Hogwarts. You can't visit. Muggles cannot. If you're escorted, okay. if they can bring a muggle Wait. in. Muggles... <laughs> and, and the Goblet of Fire. It does really going to affect the choice. Hermione here. explains that muggles cannot see Hogwarts. Hogwarts yeah. is bewitched. If a muggle looks at it, all they see sure. is a moldering Sounds like a really fun time. old <laughs> ruin but with a, a sign over the entrance you saying in. danger. A wizard can let enter. you into Hogwarts. It has never, we have never seen it happen. We have never heard of it happening. The only person without magical <laughs> powers in this is not our right. canon. All this right, all right. This is tough because <laughs> are we allowing magic to let a muggle in? Is what we're having to decide. I'm going to bring all this. Magical word is secret. That's like saying you can just go anywhere. Or because I, I'm because that really to me is the defining point. So I'm going to ask you even ask here. the question if you couldn't visit it. There is a tremendous <laughs> amount of there is a tremendous amount of racism towards Muggles in the magical world that we see repeated again and again. People who are even born think, into Muggle families. I think it's a good argument, but I, I'm going to have you help. It's a good argument, but the, like you said, the question was asked. We're assuming they can get in there. So on that basis alone, your argument was more fun. It's Dan and Alicia, let's have me. Why, so make who the are you? Who, who, who? So I said, um, because we asked the question, we're allowing and assuming there's some magic way that you could get in there. So while your argument was fine, I can't. I have to discredit yeah, it. Rather for the visit sake of, Hogwarts. Sorry, we, you can't get in. Yeah, we're, <laughs> so we're we'll, kind of, because we asked it. There is you, otherwise, it's like you can't get in. I would yeah, rather visit the argument. place I don't get killed. But I'm gonna say, based on those two arguments he had originally, I'm gonna go with more fun and the things he said. Versus, and, and I thought he did a better knockdown on the on the on the beard. Because you're just attacking but, the uh, fans. Am, am I am I allowed picking, to put yes. stock in Max's argument? Yeah. Well, yeah. Go ahead. Because I I think he thought outside of the box, so I would go with Max because he that was he brought up a good point. So I would I would choose Max. Yeah, based Alicia. on the arguments, I'd go with Max. All right. Let alone personal. That preference. closes it. That closes it. Max wins the game. Oh! Wait, I thought I lost. No. You no, didn't. I was asking for the for the jury to help me. Oh. Get started. <laughs> Ding! Congrats. Because I was being, I, I do think because the question was asked, it was allowed, but I get it. I think it's a fair call. Max wins the game. Wow. I would have chosen Hogwarts too, but I realized the second the second he said it, I was like. When have we ever seen a muggle in Hogwarts? Wait, they hate muggle. I like it's a trick yeah. question, you guys. Was, I, I tried. I tried to give it to you. But you want to visit? JK. He, he knew his stuff. <laughs> like he knew his stuff. All right. That was amazing. Thank you, guys. Max, thanks for coming, man. That was so much it. fun. Was that fun? Good. That was I told so you it would be fun. You guys are all smart and fun. You are so fun. Like Please come back. Toys. Yes, come back anytime. <laughs> We're a fan. I'm so glad you got, you got here. Spencer, wow. You brought it. You brought were it. very close. You always bring it. I'm always grateful. Thanks for coming. Uh, 
let's plug your things, actually. Let's do that as yeah. I'm doing this. Uh, uh, at Spencergate, Jay Gilbert, right? And watch, then, uh, watch on his trailers, whatever. You know. <laughs> and I'm going I back. do. They are great. Thank you. Max, anything else you'd like to plug here? Uh, we have Max. My, there we go. Up my, next, my, my next thing that's like coming out is uh, Mr. Right is a movie I wrote. Uh, is closing Toronto Film Festival, so I guess you guys yeah. can't see it. But it's, it's probably... Uh, Probably one of my favorites, other cool. than other than Chronicle. But uh, you know, as a screenwriter, what can you promote? You can't promise anything about the movies you write. You can't promise anything. We well, have Victor Frankenstein. Like, also that's coming, coming out. Go see that and give me some money. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I uh, and your Superman story. And my Superman comic is the best. Th- is uh, the most exciting thing in the world, and I I can't wait. And uh, just follow me on Twitter, and I'll keep you updated. And you, you're very active. I love it. You talk to I'm people. I'm too on active. On up, to, up, to my, up to my knees in yeah. tweets. I don't have a publicist, so no one tells me not to engage with trolls. And I, they're oh, like, I, I hated America. You're like, you're like go, Mick Mundy. Yeah. Right. Uh, Alicia, Alicia Malone, at Alicia Malone. Tell us about profiles and everything else. Where can we see you? Yeah, you can see profiles every second week on Popcorn Talk Network. We just did a great episode on Dustin Hoffman. Uh, looking forward to what we've got coming up next. Plus, you can check out my own YouTube if you like. Movies on my jam. Thank you guys for having me. That was so much fun. Thank Enjoyed you. It. Dan Merle on the Dan Cam at Merle Dan. Anything you'd like to plug, Dan? Ironically, the star of Victor Frankenstein, Daniel Radcliffe. Dan's so, coming on here? No, no the star, star of, the Vic, of Victor Frankenstein. I'm about to announce who's coming Harry on. Harry Potter, yeah, Daniel he's not Radcliffe. Allowed in Frankenstein he's allowed. Castle. He's allowed. He's <laughs> allowed. Uh, and then I'd like to thank April O'Donnell. Thank you, April, on your Twitter, April 13 Dawn. Thanks for, did you have fun? I had so much fun. Awesome. Thank you for coming, and thank you for being a fan, and thank you for dealing with all those mean people. Let's be nice people. Please be nice to people. Uh, that's all I always like to say. And I'm Andy Signor, Andy Signor. Now, before we go, I just want to say, next week, it's actually tough because you did a fantastic show but next week we're going to have another fantastic show Elijah Wood is going to be in studio and he's going to debate Lord of the Rings stuff it's so much it's going to be so much fun we're so excited I'm so happy to announce it so get excited next week for Elijah Wood but I'm still excited that Max Landers is here thanks again for coming thanks everybody at home absolute pleasure thank you please come back and uh, we will see you guys next time Bye -bye. bye bye Every podcast we put on YouTube comes with this kick-ass graphic, listing all the topics your favorite Screen Junkies podcasters are talking about. If you click the topics, you can skip around and choose your own podcast battle royale. Go ahead, try them all. If you haven't already, subscribe to Screen Junkies on YouTube to join us for future fights. Or if you prefer to listen on iTunes, click the logo to download an audio version. 